Welcome Twitch, welcome internet. It is I, Tate Washburn, the lorist for the Violet Sea. Uh, the actual play stream of the custom tabletop system that I made for this, sort of. We'll maybe see the try system again. But uh, before we talk about any of that, I would like my players to introduce themselves and who they're playing. We'll talk about other stuff they're in at the end. Uh, let's start with the scholars this time. Uh, top right. With oh my Sir god, that's me! Hi! Mm -hmm. Hello! Hey everyone! It's it me! Is. Sir Heckelot! You know! Um, today I'm playing Arden Clark, the ether biologist. Um, and I'm just very excited to be here. We're gonna we're gonna see all the critters. This is gonna be great. Uh, let's move it on over so to Lucian. Critters. Hello, it's me, Lucian. Um, I play our marble slinging material scientist, Dr. Oliver Evans, who's uh, you know, pretty excited to be in a new place, looking for new things. And yeah, I'll pass it on over. Hello, I am Purple Phil. I'm gonna be playing uh, Maxwell Tuttle, our boat historian. Yep, just that, nothing else. Don't worry about it. And with that, I'll pass <laughs> it on over to Fail. Yo, I'm Fail Prime. I am playing Reese, a transhumanist uh, android uh, who likes his his uh, pipe organ that seemingly got destroyed. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. And I will pass it on up to Michelle. Hey, it's uh, me, Michelle. I'm playing Quinn Archer, our uh, bodyguard come chef come medic. Also with small child. And I pass it up. Yeah, I guess that last leaves it to me. What's up, folks? I'm Young Foxy, a.k.a. Big Foxy, also known as your favorite fox. And today I'll be reprising my role as the audacious, loquacious, and rambunctious Captain Dre. Back to you, Tate. Perfect. And that's all of you. Uh, yeah. Happy to be here. I'm glad you guys are all here. I'm glad we got Twitch showing up. Yeah. So... Uh, what happened last time, if y'all remember, because it's been a while, is that you guys made plans to and quite perfectly executed a dash towards the continent. I think you bombed a ship, uh, did a lot of racing around trying not to get hit by stuff, and eventually made it to the continent and actually touched down uh, ooh, ooh. both as for resources and... Oh. I actually want to be specific about this because I, I literally just watched the last sessions. I wanted to because there was so much cool shit that happened. Uh, specifically, a ship pulled out was gonna pull out a blade on us, and Oliver slung a marble into it. Fucked them all up real good, which was super cool. Another shit came up to us. We fucking hit them with the cannons, blasted the fuck out of them. That was dope as shit. And then the flashy Ren, our good old cat friend Captain Asshole, pulled up. And we had to deal with him real quick. So Dre did some fancy acrobatic type shit on that. That was super, super cool. And then we kind of just like, oh, and then two other ITCC uh, ships pulled up. Uh, or I, uh, ITC ships pulled up. And we're going to uh, fuck us up. And Oliver threw another marble that like gravity bombed them into each other. Which was cool as shit. And yeah, it was really fucking cool. Uh, and so that all that happened. I wanted to make sure we pointed out all the cool shit people did. Because it was really fucking cool. Y'all should watch the YouTube video when it goes up. Or is it up? Well, it's up. I don't know. It's up. It should be. Yep, it's yep. up. Okay. If you want cool action shit, that's what we did last time. And uh, after you guys landed, you uh, decided that you were going to go find some resources uh, around the island. You aren't really low on food or water, but you definitely took a certain amount of damage. And also there's, you know, cool shit to explore and do. It seems like, though, that the big twist at the end was that Captain Dre mostly agreed to this so he could send people out to do some revolutionary type spy shit. Some stuff. We're doing some stuff. Gonna start a fucking riot. We're doing, apparently. We're dead. listen, it's a good song. You should hear it. <laughs> Look, this is the Violet Sea, where it's the only show that I consistently, always, no matter what game I'm playing, empower Foxy to do some riot shit. That's just apparently what happens every time. Yeah. And I love you for it. You know that, right? Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. <laughs> uh, what I'd like to do, what I'd like to do is sort of give our, uh, give our mechanic Reese a chance to decide what he was doing the whole time, which I believe would be fixing the organ and the ship. Yeah, I would have been down there trying to tinker away, get rid of some of the dents, and, you know, make sure we're in good shape. Mm -hmm. uh, so, just, uh, roll me something about it. Uh, let me take a look here. Roll... Ooh, so mechanic knowledge. 
I guess I would roll on uh, like matter formation as I'm down there trying to re like fix everything. So quick fix. Yeah, you won't have to. You can spend points on this, but you get them all back at the beginning of the session anyway, since this is all last time. Uh, I would like you actually to roll mechanic knowledge and uh, matter formation, uh, one after the other. I think. All right. Foxy, just having a good time laughing at Nightbot. <laughs> no, I'm just. I'm going to behave myself. I'm not going to say anything. I'm so sorry, guys. So what are we doing right now? I'm sorry. I missed You're out bad. on it. So I got a nine for matter formation. Mm -hmm. And... And a nine for quick fix. Okay. Uh, and that without points? Yeah. Uh, then I would say... Let's just say you spend three points so you can get to a comedic success. Oh, I was going to also add, uh, I don't know if it will help enough, but could I also count as him adding my captaining bonus mm -hmm. since, you know, it would have been an order for him to fix the stuff up on the ship? Uh, unless you can get more than three to his roll, it's not going to help. Ah, uh, and I only add my captaining bonus, right? That's it? Yeah, I mean, you can also said you spend points. By oh yeah, yeah. How many points you had to spend at the end of that? Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I I, I still have points to spend left definitely before we before your end of session. So I yeah, I can I can throw my captain bonus is plus two. So then I'll throw one more point at it to add mm -hmm. three more. So that gives that brings to a, I should be going to a full success, right? Uh, no, you need to do do two points. Oh cool, then I'll do that. Yeah, then yeah, both of those uh, can end up being a full success. Uh, I'm gonna say. You are lucky enough to find that the pieces of the organs are, organ is pretty much all there. You do have to, like, take some spare timber to recreate some of the wooden bits, like keys and knobs and things. But, like, all the pipes and the mechanics behind it uh, were mostly dented and banged up, not, like, obliterated to the point of no return. And so it's kind of like the world's most musical and annoying jigsaw, but you kind of managed to fit that together, and it does help that it also fixed the engines quite a bit. And I think you get like the pipe part fixed immediately. And it's just for the rest of the trip, you have been piecing together this organ. And in fact, you think it might've solved the tuning problem. Awesome. You think? Nice. You're pretty sure. I guess we'll find out next time I need to, uh, <laughs> you know, go Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Which will yeah. probably be soon, and, honestly. Uh, mm. uh, I'm also going to say, for your benefit, we've uh, touched down at a part on the island, and you kind of suggested, like, hey, we uh, spent a lot of our fuel, so it needs a bit to, like, collect aether from the air again. Uh, but you might have fudged that number a little bit, specifically to try and land in this area, because you have a very small number of your old journals from before you got turned into a robot. Uh, you're pretty sure, you think, the sort of set of buildings you landed down near may or may not be some place you visited at one point back when this continent was like a normal one okay so if awesome. you want to go with yeah if you want to go with the exploration party i believe it would be uh arden and quinn yeah i can and go keep arden and quinn go. out of trouble mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse uh, my job. I can't remember if we said Oliver if you went also. Yeah, but... I, 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 I've again since having watched the last session. Uh, Oliver went out to go look for specifically metals and materials and stuff. Uh, Oliver went along with the first mate to look for things that are edible and survivable. At which point, I sent Arden along with to say make sure the things we find that are edible are actually edible and or not poisonous because I don't feel like dying to some food. Uh, and then Quinn mm -hmm. decided to go along, too, because, well, those people are all pretty scrawny and need to have themselves not die. Hence, Quinn. Mm -hmm. That sounds about right. So, yeah, as they collectively, as the three or four of you collectively get together, uh, if you would like, Reese, you can say, get out of the ship and be like, hey, wait for me. <laughs> hey, hey, wait. No, don't go. I wasn't ready. <laughs> oh, dude. Are you coming with? Hurry up then. Yeah, get over here. We got places to go. Things to see. Metals to find. 
Does, does Reese usually make that voice? <laughs> no, no, I don't. No, okay. No, Tin Man does not. <laughs> yeah, you don't, don't think really I know him too well to right make that nickname yet. Yeah. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's just messing with your like vocal processors. You're not sure. You gotta adjust that a bit. Yeah, it must be Anyways. because of all the uh, organ shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, he had to take out his low range to put in the organ. <laughs> Part of his own voice box and put it in there. That's, de that's, that's dedication. But yeah, you have found yourself on this, uh, you put the ship down on this field that is conspicuously empty of either the very few normal trees that have managed to survive, I guess survive isn't the right word, that have, haven't been eaten away yet. They're pretty much dead wood covered in these polyps that when you get close, the like almost grass-like uh, appendages shoot back into the polyps and it reveals it's a dead tree. But at a distance, they all look just like real fuzzy trees. Mm. Uh, so you have landed in this field kind of empty of all of those things uh, to the west is mostly more forest it's to the east that there are more of these buildings it looks like maybe it was a small town or like some kind of research facility it's unclear because most of the markings of what these buildings would have been have been eroded away either by various creatures digging into the soil or polyps or just the you know erosion of time hmm. but we're going towards the buildings right i think so That's up to you cool we could now i'm just gonna start walking towards the buildings <laughs> uh-oh doing some adventure shit uh -oh. changing the music up. <laughs> it's suddenly a lot more action-packed than i was expecting i don't know guys Fine. Sure, we are. Quinn's gonna follow. Yeah. Bach. Music. Oh no. <laughs> because um, as soon as I have like any like whiff of like a critter or something that might near might be nearby, um, I would like mm. to use uh, my tracking ability. Yeah, actually, I think that's one of the notes we left on is that you've uh, definitely seen some tracks around that yeah. are not the wide feet of the like super large critters. It's uh, smaller and more claw-like, and you have seen signs of things like in the more heavily treed and bushed areas, uh, scuttling about. Excuse so, me, yeah, I, be I believe me some stuff about that. I believe we called the large crustaceans we saw earlier the wagyu crabs. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. Wait, oh my God. the wagyus. The fucking yeah. wagyu crabs. <laughs> I think uh, if Arden is going to take point, or then uh, Quinn's gonna follow like just a step behind and make sure BD's not gonna get hit by anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah, you've met, you've left V behind as much as V wanted to go, so you can decide that Arden is sort of your primary uh, protecting target that your oh. uh, abilities let you target as like this is the person that can't get hurt. Yeah, Won't they're small. Is is Arden kind of smallish? I mean, yeah. Like they're like, I mean, I guess kind of average. Like I don't know, five three, five four, maybe five so, yeah, two, like somewhere in that Quinn. range. Yeah. So compared to Quinn, compared Arden to Quinn, is small. small. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So what'd you get? Oh, so this is notice, right? Uh, I no yes, I believe. Yet. Okay. Yes, it is. It is notice. So let me roll that real fast. I don't know what my mod is. It's okay. Plus two. Oh, pardon me for um second. Wow. Okay. Uh. Ooh. That is a, that a three. Twelve. Oh, so that's thirteen then. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Forgot about the left here. We're learning how to play the game again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, with a thirteen, uh, you can spend points if you'd like, but you're uh. Remember, the range for comedic set success is 11 to 15. But mm -hmm. uh, I believe with your tracking, you get to ask me some questions on a comedic success. I do. I can learn two to three details about uh, the character or uh, what the creature left. Um, hmm. Or no, oh, comedic success is uh, giving one or two false facts and one true one. 
Um, you know what? Just because I want to use, like, I just want to use my moves. Like, I just think they're all cool. Use um, your moves. I'm gonna go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna go oh. ahead and do study passage. Um, which basically means if I succeed or not, I can spend one MP to roll a new notice roll. Um, using my knowledge stat instead. Um, let's see if I can mm. gain some more details. Show your moves. Let's do that. Because <laughs> Show me your that moves. That sounds fun. <laughs> We're gonna do that. What have I done? Damn it. No, oh, that is a I almost need to change general. them now. So okay, sorry. so that's gonna Ooh. be a sixteen then. Yeah. Well damn. Alright, so uh I think the way that works then is you can ask me three questions and they're all going to be true. Exactly. Uh, just one of, them, I'm, one of them I'm going to be like, you thought this, but then you remembered like <laughs> textbooks on the subject and it was that instead. Very nice. Very nice. Um, okay. Uh, hmm. I'm going to say one of the questions you can't ask is just, what is this thing? Because this is a creature that isn't that well known. For sure. Like, it's not like a what is, it's more like what kind of creature is it so like yeah we already kind of like mentioned crustacean but could we like narrow it down more to like crab like or lobster like or mm. that kind of thing i'm gonna say uh you have you are a specialist in aether biology specifically and i think that you probably have studied like wandering island biology the continent is a sort of new beast in that it can sustain a much larger ecosystem uh, but when it comes to these crustacean-like creatures that live at super depths, uh, it's not really crab or lobster-like. It ends up being more, is it defensive or aggressive are the two oh. main categories. Okay. And, uh, yeah, this thing is definitely aggressive based on its, like, claw shape. It's definitely Good designed to, to dig in really well. Uh, you would know that in the, like, deep aether, where they can, like, actually float, float, uh, they're designed to shoot through the water really quickly and like grab onto surfaces and just really fast turns. Uh, thankfully, at this height, they are not moving remotely as fast as they would down there. If it was down there, you guys would have no fucking chance of getting away. But here, they'll probably be less, less fast, but still like as fast know. as you. Good to know, good to know. Uh, okay, so that's one. Um, I really want to clip Foxy dancing right now. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm sure somebody in the chat will do it for you. Um, yeah. Someone's on it already. Um. <laughs> Fuck you, okay, alright? Uh, I was just trying to aggressive. have a good time, be um, a cheerleader for my friends, and here you go. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> How long ago were these tracks mm. made, relatively? Ooh. Uh, the path you see here... Uh, and it goes for maybe like 10 feet before it starts going on surfaces that won't leave tracks. Probably like about when the ship landed, so say like 20 minutes ago, you think that they scattered when the ship got close. Ah, okay. And I guess this would be kind of like as we're walking too, like... Oh yeah. How... Hmm. Well, we already know they're going relatively slowly, so how fast is it really going to work? But, um, yeah, yeah how I would say close is it? Of the freebie, yeah, I would say that was the freebie in speed, is they probably move mm -hmm. about as fast as a person can move at this point, which is still yeah. fast. Uh, so wait, how uh, far are they from you? Yeah. Is that the question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think this is as you're approaching these buildings, mm -hmm. uh, you think that they are staying out of sight? They're an ambush predator, so they're trying not to be seen by you. So it's probably like just in the tree line or maybe inside some of these buildings if they could get in. They are not far. Oh, well, these are fresh. They're definitely really close by. Um, by they, I mean... Uh... Yeah, no, these, uh, these ether crustaceans. And, uh, I don't know if you all know this, but, um, there are some that are kind of built for speed and, uh, aggression. Some that are more, um, dome-shaped for, uh, defense. And these are definitely the more aggressive kind, so, uh, 
standard house. So you're saying there's crabs around? Eh, basically, more or less. Question is, can I make a decent crab hot pot out of these? <laughs> Do we know that? <laughs> Are they safe to eat? I should have asked that. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're crabs, right? They're probably fine. You wouldn't know that until you actually got a hold of one. Like, that's not a detail you can oh, okay. get out of these. Yeah, it depends on the uh, morphology. I think that's like a interesting question for you. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I've never attempted to eat one, and I guess it would depend on the morphology. Um, the defensive would be a little bit more toxic, just based on, you know, they, they're prey items, too. Um, the aggressive, I don't know if they would have as much need for it. Um, some... I don't know, some might have kind of a venomous uh, tactic, but probably not all of them. And if anything, it would probably be sequestered in one spot that you could remove. Alright, next question. How can we off them so we can, so we can try making soup out of them? Well, you'd probably have to get through that carapace very quickly. Um, I mean, we're high enough up um, off of the surface that uh, they're not too fast. We wouldn't have a chance. If uh, we were actually deeper down, where they actually kind of live, um, but uh, yeah, if I had to guess, stay away from the claws. Kind of rule number one. Rule number that, one. Um, that, that makes sense. Yeah, rule number two uh, would be yeah, get through that carapace as fast as you can. I just want to say Quinn's asking the smart questions. I know I'm not there, but just I'm just saying Quinn's asking the right questions right now. And see, so, like, yeah, like, Arden's, like, already kind of, like, thought of this, like, in their head already. They already kind of know, like, what to look at, but it's like, oh, mm. we can tell the other people, too, so they kind of know what's going on. So what pulls you're out, saying like, is... Butcher's cleaver and is like, will this work? <laughs> I mean, possibly, sure. Hey, hit it in the right place. So if we <laughs> just keep walking that way, odds are one of them will attack us. Right? Yeah, just carefully. I mean, I would rather, if, if we could, ideally get the drop on them, but I don't know how possible that is. Uh, they're they're crafty, despite uh, not having a, you know, the uh, same, same neurology, same brain as us. Great. So it's, uh, you get here, as you've been here for like 10 minutes and you're already talking about crafty crabs. I mean... Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, well. People don't give uh, uh, the creatures here enough credit, I'll be honest. You're uh, having this conversation as you're now starting to get into the midst of this set of buildings. Uh, again, it looks like it's probably like a really small town where it's got like one main road through it and buildings on either side. Uh, I think you guys, without having to roll for it, do hear the heavy shuffling uh, around the corner of one of the large creatures uh, that I just forgot the name that we gave them. Oh, I just said the Wagyu crabs. The Wagyu crabs. Why not? That's that's the colloquial. <laughs> Listen, Drake well, called the mollusk things light second. suckers. All right. <laughs> yeah. So Arden, you're probably like, yeah, that can be the name for them. I guess it's fine. They have a taxonomical name, but there's got to be a normal one. So sure, Wagyu. Uh, we ain't going taxonomically eat them. <laughs> sure. That doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't have to. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, Arjun's just keeping their eyes, the like, peeled. And, yeah, mm -hmm. it's just kind of watching that one spot um, for more movement. Mm -hmm. Uh. Everyone else can roll some kind of notice if they want to get more details, but uh, I've given you what you're going to get so far. Absolutely. I'm going to roll notice. I just want to know more about, like, the buildings, really, and what they're oh, sure. for and about. Uh... That's why I've not been very specific, because no one has rolled. Uh, 18. That, yeah. 18's very good. Uh, what the other two get if you're rolling? If you're not, you don't have to. You can just be strolling along, no thoughts have empty, that's fine. <laughs> uh, I, rolled a, I rolled a 12, but I think uh, Quinn is more more concerned about like any sort of uh, threats right now, and also assessing uh, specifically like what things look edible around here. Mm -hmm. I also rolled a 12. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, in that case, uh, Oliver, you are sort of like looking at these buildings and you'd notice a few things, especially as like a material scientist, that while the sort of stonework on the outside of them have been pocked out by various creatures pretty thoroughly, mm -hmm. uh, you can start seeing the like skeleton of these buildings in a lot of cases. And they actually were using some, what looks like fairly high quality metal considering that it hasn't really broken down. A lot of it's like rusted or bent from creatures trying to gnaw at it maybe, but mm -hmm. like the skeleton of these buildings is still pretty much intact. Uh, you would have to like really get up close to one and maybe do some chemical tests to know exactly what kind of metal it is, but it's easily a higher grade like iron or steel, honestly, which seems like overkill for these buildings, honestly, to you. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I'm going to walk over and just kind of like mm -hmm. tap on one. Mm hmm. And be like, hey guys, yeah, you could be some material scientist to learn more from that if you want. Yeah, let's see. Um, oh boy. Well, in the meantime, uh, the other two of you who are more just sort of generally looking around, uh, Quinn, you probably pick one of these little, uh, the lightning suckers, the little polyps. Although I guess these aren't the lightning suckers. These are like the grass ones. You pull one off and you have to like use a knife to open it up. But the inside does have like, I don't know, for you, it's hard to qualify. Is, like, this a meat? Is it a plant? It's kind of somewhere in between. Uh, but, you know, you give it a, a good poke, and you're like, well, maybe I could boil this up and see if it's all right. Uh, like, it kind of, like, look... gelatin or something? Yeah, it's like a mussel, but it also has, like, a sort of stringy plant-like quality. Hmm. I'll definitely and, uh... want to uh, get... Uh the debris out of a uh, you know, filtering mechanism they have. Uh, they can they can build up a whole lot of it. And since we're in a building, it's probably concrete. Another 18, by the way. Uh, yeah. The, uh, this metal looks like it was refined through some kind of aether process, like someone used magic to make it. Uh, and it's as you uh, tap it, you realize that it's actually pretty thin and light. Like it's not as uh, it's not as heavy mm -hmm. as you thought. It might be like almost a hollow bean. Uh, gotcha. You're not you're not sure why they would use that on like a regular like housing thing, unless it was super easy for them to make. Right. So it's possible this is a downtown area still, but you think this is maybe more of some sort of uh, bunker or uh, facility, maybe. Right. Like, maybe this was more of a research place if they had this high-quality metal. Okay. So, uh, guys, this, uh, this metal stuff is pretty cool. We should, um... How long are we staying here again? Can we... Can we do, how long do I have to take... Dismantle as much of this as I can? It's up to the captain. I'll see if I can convince him. <laughs> Anybody see Between anything you interesting? And Reese. Between you and Reese, you could probably take a big hunk of it with you. Oh yeah, hey, uh, hey Reese, you wanna? I mean, this stuff's pretty cool, right? I mean, it's metal. Yeah, can you can you help me get a big chunk of it? Yeah, we could t we could take a chunk of it. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. All right, well we can do that on our way back. I'm sure there's other more interesting things to see around here besides you know just. Picking apart the buildings. Yeah, uh, Reese. So you got a twelve, right? Yeah. Uh, what I think that uh, you are really looking for is anything that, like, pings a memory because you don't really remember stuff from when you lived on this continent, but you sometimes kind of do. So with a twelve, I think you get a vague understanding of like. I've definitely been in this space before and you're just looking around for like what building was important to me and trying to orient yourself and uh, you think like you need to get a little farther in. Okay. So basically uh, I'm just looking for like the nearest 7-Eleven. <laughs> I mean maybe you don't know. You're looking for a place where you can find one of your journals, is what I kind of assume. 
but I don't know if that's gonna help. Uh, so yeah, let's just uh, let's just keep moving. Uh, on our way back, we can grab some metal samples. Uh, we could attempt to dismantle one of these entire buildings if you really felt the need. Um, but I'm yeah. I'm sure we'll we'll find more interesting things uh, even further in. Like we're we're at the outskirts of this place right now. Like if you look over there, I'm pretty sure that was a post office. Um, so I mean, you're not gonna find much much interesting in there except for like catalogs so if you need some of those eh it's not metal yeah let's keep going mm. uh yeah you go past this corner and yeah there's one of the big like wagyu dome shaped guys that's just just chomping away he's just getting at some of these polyps that have grass in it grazing basically it seems to not really be bothered by your presence that much uh, so long as you don't, like, get close to it, you're pretty sure it's not gonna, like, jump at you. But, uh... What I would like is, uh, one more notice roll from y'all as you enter. <laughs> Go to ten. Alright, hold a, on, hold on, I got I'm in mod. That is a 17. Uh, 17 as well. There we go. I, I knew I sent a competent crew somehow. <laughs> <laughs> One way or another. I knew someone here was competent. Well, it wasn't bad. All right, so that's two 17s from our uh, science -y ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, what did our pirates get? I got a 9. 10. <laughs> nine. We're, okay. just, we're just well, collective yeah. fuck-ups, guys. Really not repping the pirate gang, well. <laughs> pirate gang not repping. Uh, yeah, so I don't know what uh, Quinn and uh, yeah Reese are really looking for. They're just sort of vaguely like, where is the danger coming from as you enter? However, the two, the two scientists here both material and biological, uh, you guys start noticing as you go through the town that uh, every time you pass by a narrow alleyway, there's the sound of something stopping scuttling, like that specific sound of something skidding to a halt. Uh, you don't really hear things when they move, but only when they're, they attempt to stop moving. It's kind of unnerving. Uh, I think one of you gets a flash of something that's like a a greenish bluish color uh, dart around a corner and you realize that you are definitely being stalked by these things. Uh, you can do it that way you wish, but you're pretty sure uh, as you get to the main intersection where there's like much bigger, there's like a much bigger road that you would let you see left and right that uh, that's the most likely place that a animal would ambush you is where it can no longer really stalk you. What do you know? Yeah. You hear that? Yeah, I told you they were crafty. We're not the only things tracking out here. Mm. It seems like assassin crabs and shit. This is ridiculous. Yeah. That's that's how a lot of ocean predators are. Like. Ocean predator. Take me from the <laughs> predators. I think part of your uh, notice... Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, ardent part of your notice is you're pretty sure these are pack hunters now that you've like seen or heard some of them move around you're like oh there's a few of them yeah probably not the only one either especially for oh. going up to an intersection like that there's one following but uh the others are probably waiting up there if I had to guess gotcha well, this could be fun. And do I have any idea of, like, if our group could take multiple of them? Well, uh, I would love for you to uh, roll using your one move that lets you understand animals one more time. Oh, You're tracking. On. Yeah. Okay, so that would be another notice. So let me do that. Ooh, Honestly, if okay. you wanted the... Uh, if you wanted the, uh, well, what number did you get? Sorry. Okay, because that's another 17. 
Ah, well, perfect, because I was going to say you could make that previous one a uh, tracking. Uh, yeah, just like seeing them scuttle away and judging size, you think that... You think that it... You could definitely hold them off. Like, these things are ambush predators. If you could get one or two of them a real good hit, the rest are probably going to scram. But you do have to get one or two of them with a real good hit. And also, if you want to study them later, uh, you probably don't want uh, Oliver to obliterate them with an explosive marble, because there's not going to be a lot left. Okay. Like, you've seen Quinn Funny, work. You funny you Quinn could probably that. take off a limb. Because yeah. I'm currently oh, yeah. charging a marble in each hand. <laughs> All right, it's like, so so, so let's set up before we, we get too hasty here. Um, if we do demolish them, we won't get any information or food from them, probably. Um, but uh, no, if, uh, if we really commit here, and I mean commit, and give them kind of a show of like how tough we are and that we're not just, you know, prey to get taken down, they're still scram for the most part. They're they're lazy. They don't want to fight too much for their food. Can we so collapse no these explosions? Buildings? And I changed the charge from like the orange that it was before to like an icy blue. Oh, or a frost. Hot marbles out. New marbles. E. <laughs> uh, Quinn asked the question: Could you collapse a building? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say, uh, Oliver, you're pretty sure from the structures of these buildings it would be yeah. hard to do because there's not a lot of cement left. It is right. mostly polyps and sort of almost a, uh, uh, what's the, coral kind of buildup. It's basically right. like the leftovers of these polyps uh, around these metal bits. Uh, you could definitely shatter one of these buildings, but there's not going to be a lot that will collapse over on them. Yeah, Quinn, I don't, I don't think it's going to work. There's not a lot left in these buildings plus that if one of them was on top of it you could definitely knock it like the building apart and it would fall down but it wouldn't right. there's a metal shell right yeah I, well it's not metal. so much a shell but it's like metal reinforced with concrete but the metal's not it's pretty weak and like light i mean we could i could you know do some some fancy channeling and uh reconstruct it into a cage now that is a good idea. Then we can take home the metal and the crab. <laughs> Am I giving you a crab pet? Is that what's happening? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I mean, assuming Quinn doesn't I feel like these are too first. angry. Nah. <laughs> angry well, crab pet. Uh, I would like to give you guys a chance to do a little planning while we go back to the ship. Because, uh... But, when we left the last session, Dre sent some people out to do a thing, and uh, he has a spy on his ship who would notice that, I think, so I would like our ship historian to roll a little bit of spycraft, probably, to be like, did you Urf. notice a bunch of people get sent off on some spy shit? Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, just just straight spycraft or any ability with it? I, whatever probably. ability you think would be appropriate. Awareness makes sense to me. Um, Alright, the roll is a 10, uh, putting me at a 14. Uh, adding my skill and ability. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I could put some points in, but I kind of <laughs> like the comedic success on this one. Yeah, I, I think that's some good flavor. Uh, I think the thing you notice most is... Uh, yeah, with all of these people leaving, uh, I have to be honest, I cannot find my uh, list of characters, and that's a problem. Take your time. What are you looking for? Oh, just a document I had on all of the No, I was, I was, is there a character you're looking for? Specifically, I might remember the name. Uh, you know, the Rigger. Danil. I think is one of the people you send out. D uh, Danil. Yeah, so... I. Yeah, I think you would really notice that Daniil is leaving the ship out into the wild to do something. And you're like, wait, that's someone who's very valuable on the ship and isn't, like, an expert at, like, material retrievement, but is extremely reliable, extremely fast, and despite her maybe more dramatic magic, can kind of, like, blend in fairly well with, like, other people. 
Like, nothing about the way she dresses or acts is very, like, bombastic until she, you know, does some of her wind channeling shit. And that definitely pings you as weird. I think in general, like, probably to, uh, there's not really a lot of boats around. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. we're kind of by ourselves, so Maxwell doesn't really have a lot to do with his time. He's probably, like, just, like, sitting on the deck of the ship with, like, a spyglass, like, trying to see some of, like, the boats on the distance of the co continent, like, landing in different spots. But he's he's kind of just, like, mm -hmm. messing around. I don't think he has any, like, particular... Um, basically, everyone around us right now is on the ship. It's, so it's not really things he's, like, he was specifically looking out for. So I think he's kind of just, like in his free time, looking around and probably sees this. Um, just like, oh, there's a lot less people on crew today. Also, that person's leaving. That's weird. Mm -hmm. but yeah, like, some of the other crew, you could be like, well, they're probably out gathering, like, what other materials, like the four of them, but, like, closer by, or, like, securing the area or whatever. But that's when we're like, mm, don't know about that. So do with that what you will. Mm -hmm. Just hold on to it. What's Dre doing? Hmm. Uh, what is Dre doing? Uh, Dre stayed down on the bottom deck for a good bit. Just kind of thinking, you know, looking at the map for a while, taking some stuff in. I think eventually he decides he needs some air, and yeah, he thinks probably also makes his way out to his usual spot around the mast where he hangs out around, around the deck. Kind of just taking in, you know, the air and the environment. Probably sees Maxwell. I don't know if he says anything outright or... No, I don't think he says anything outright. But definitely sees him. Throws him a nod. You know? Like, Maxwell just has his cup of tea and, like, a telescope that he, like, occasionally looks out of and then, like, puts it away. <laughs> Sips his tea. He's just, like, had, he brought a chair probably, like, from below deck and just set it, like, on, on deck. So he has, like, a spot to just, like, sit. <laughs> and, like, that's, that's what he's doing. He's just kind of, like, chilling yeah you know what Trey's gonna walk up kind of like grab a spot kind of next to you kind of just like not like necessarily grab a chair but just kind of like plop down uh i don't know, like on the deck floor lean up against the mast a bit you know just <clears throat> a lot of people seem to be out and about right now what are you up to right now maxwell uh greetings captain uh not much i mean it's not really much expertise i can give here everything that I know about is we kind of left behind with uh, all those uh, explosions and sail tearing yeah ships do tend to be your thing I suppose <coughs> makes a guy wonder where you get all this know-how ah uh, well you know uh, studying on other ships and going through logs walking through the ports <clears throat> Must have seen a lot in front of us. Yeah. When you pick up <clears throat> the little details of which ships go to which ports, figure <clears throat> out where they're really making their money. I imagine a man like you's uh knows well and travels well. Doing that, you definitely learn a lot. Imagine you also maybe form a few opinions here or there. <clears throat> a couple. I only care about a few of them anyway. Can't have too many. Or people... It'd be hard for anyone to agree with you. Fair enough, I suppose. Does make me wonder, though. How do you feel about this, uh... This world around us? In a general sense, I guess. The continent or the... Everything? The... the what's the word? Or more of the current situation with the inner <coughs> governments and it's the... that other s word for lots of people uh ah, damn it i heard the captain say this once before i was the captain the society there it is society mm. yeah how do you feel about society Well, there's a lot of different ones, and they all do things a little bit differently. <coughs> Not that differently. 
Trust me. In some ways. Not in the ways that matter. Point is... Yeah, well... <clears throat> suppose what I'm getting at is, uh... I don't know. Seems like, for all the differences, society agrees on a couple things. What would you say if someone didn't? Hmm. That seems to be their right. Right. If they should be allowed to. They can find other people that agree. They can make their own society. Right. Never had those before. It was good. I mean, do you own a ship? You have plenty of rights. <laughs> plenty of them, too. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm just still getting used to the concept. To a lot of sailors, a ship like this is all they really need it. They can go anywhere. I mean, they're still burdened by food and caring for crew and that kind of stuff, but freedom comes with responsibilities, as well as its rights of deciding where you get to go and what you get to do. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Ship like this gives a man the only thing he really needs. Freedom one of the reasons why I like following them seeing how people use their freedom <laughs> for good or for bad keep an eye on me then huh <clears throat> you seem to use it for good <laughs> he sits up good talk make stuff useful and walks off uh the do you mean what? And he's just like now, like yeah, I was. Just, I don't have anything to do. I'm just drinking tea. <laughs> I think uh, Ozturk is like on deck, and he has all these various instruments, and he's like pulled bits of some of these plants, and he's like taking samples, and he's just having a grand old time on deck. And it just as you like this conversation ends, he literally is like, "Hey, can I borrow that?" And he just like grabs the spyglass and starts just looking at. Like the where the mountains and cities are placement and it are placed and he's taking notes. He has like a smaller version of his big map in a notebook that he's like being like, Oh interesting, da da da. So you could definitely help him with that, I guess. Yeah, he'll just like finish his tea and set it down and go. Alright, Oster. What if what are you looking at? Oh just uh well the island, while it is definitely wandering, isn't necessarily geologically inactive. Uh, it is still taking in ether and water and particles, and it's changing as all islands and continents do. I'm just uh, taking notes as to how much it has since we were last here. And how much has it? Not a lot. Not shifted? Uh, not a lot since uh, it's only been a year or two. Or it's only been a, a less than a year since we were here last, but... Compared to the notes from the last time the continent came around, uh, years and years ago, decades ago even, quite a bit. And he starts going into some technical details on, like, the shape of the mountain to one direction and, like, distances between this mountain and, like, the edge of the continent and stuff like that that have shifted ever so slightly. But, uh, yeah. You think this will, uh... I guess it's kind of... Oh, sorry. Uh, there, so if I can get a reminder just so uh, Purple, the player, remembers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Ostark yeah. had previously said that we're going here to find a vault, right? Yes. Okay, just like more or less. This was... Okay, because I think... Uh, it was specifically, he has some inclination that like, he's found notes in places that refer to this vault that had a lot of like the state secrets of this continent and believes that something about how the island became wandering should be there. Gotcha. Um, he's gonna, do you think uh, all this moving will have moved uh, our target location then? Possibly. 
Uh, not really since we <coughs> almost got there last time if we'd only been a bit faster, so it shouldn't have moved that much. But it is definitely not where I expected it to be. Uh, that's part of why it took us so long to find it the last time was it had shifted a bit. I just can only hope that the whole facility shifted and it didn't uh, collapse any underground tunnels or such. This is mostly an in-the-mountain uh, sort of vault built into the side. Uh, I don't need to say it before, part, but if you... I, no, I just got a itching feeling. Do you know what? What? What do you expect to be here? Uh, he sort of stops taking notes, and he closes his book, and he sort of sighs, and he's like, "It's generally acknowledged or believed that." It was there experimenting with uh, the heart steel, the sort of core of a continent that caused this destabilization. It was their own doing, but they had some of the most advanced metallurgy of anyone at the time. Arguably some of the advancements that we find here are unknown even now, a hundred, 150 years later. I can't imagine that they would do something as foolish as damage one of the island hearts that keeps their continent afloat. I, I'm hoping I find it was some accident or some, I don't know, geological event that they just didn't plan for or didn't notice. And by learning more about it, I can possibly, I don't know, restore some of the dignity, honor, to the name of these people, of my people. I'm worried, though, I might find something darker. Foul play? Well, there's a reason that uh, material scientists and geologists are highly valued. The best way to take out an island is to simply damage the heart that keeps it afloat. It could have been political turmoil inside. And you see he hesitates to say the or, the obvious or. Yeah, the obvious of, or that, that Maxwell's already thinking, <laughs> probably. Yeah, of, or an outside force. Seems odd that people would want to keep that quiet if it was internal. Well when you're trying to take over a country, would be the only political event I could imagine of this scale, you don't tend to advertise it. Perhaps that what we'll find, that's what we'll find there, is some saboteur that remains, their devices they used. The only reason I even got funding for this was simply so we can understand how it happened and possibly prevent it from happening again, even if my goals are a little more political than that. What are your goals if that does happen? Prove to be the case. He, uh... You know what? I'm gonna have you actually uh, roll some kind of lying, because he's gonna give you a good look. This is a little little pointed, I think. Oh, okay. I, I want to give him uh, a good look, actually, because I realize I think every time he said what his goals are about this, I don't think anyone's insight checked him. <laughs> But uh, I, I I will yeah, give my I will he's... give my uh, deceive first for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's gonna be pretty good. Uh, that's a I can't math. A thirteen on the roll with a plus six is a nineteen. Ah, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll just give it a pat. Uh... If he beats me, I don't know that there's anything I'm really too afraid of giving yeah. away. So. <laughs> well, uh, you should be this is a very pointed question that a spy would want to know uh but he rolled a oh, 14 I want to know the answer. actually super good at insight uh, oh yeah no well so that's what your deceive is about is he's very much like why oh why do you why are you know? asking oh, okay. that okay uh but you you roll pretty high and he's not actually a super insightful person it turns out he definitely went into a lot of knowledge not not a lot of awareness this man gotcha uh can I, can I do so the, he sort is of, he going to tell me, or should, can I do a reverse yeah, yeah. insight to see? You can definitely also roll insight, but I'm going to first, like, tell you. He gives you a look up and down, and he 
maybe foolishly decides to trust you, he says, I, I don't know what I'll do if I find out it's not a saboteur or an accident. If it's some kind of sabotage, if it's some kind of accident, I'll write a paper, I'll publish my findings, hopefully prevent a similar event from happening on an island or a continent later, uh, help engineers like our good friend Oliver to design ways to preventing this accident. And if it's not, and he just looks so nervous at the idea and so conflicted, like, I won't be able to just stay quiet about it. I can't. I'm sure a historian like you would understand. If it was foul play from outside, it is something that probably should be known. So that doesn't help happen else, elsewhere. I just can't imagine why a whole continent of people. It's such a massive waste. You can conquer a continent. You can take it over. You can get the resources and the people. Hundreds of thousands of people died when this went down. Not everyone could get to ships in time. Many people were trapped in their homes, and all the natural resources, even. I... I don't know. It feels like there would have to be more. Like, more of a reason. You'd hope there would be, at least. Hmm. I you could, uh, roll me... Just to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it, but it does back so. Uh... 13. And that's a... Uh, I have to have this open, otherwise I forget my own numbers oh, that I decided it. using math. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, math. Anyways, uh, yeah, you... I mean, you're pretty sure... He's being up and up about this. Like, he is not trying to deceive you. This isn't contested. Uh, you aren't... You don't really have a hard line on... Uh, how far he'll go if he finds out it's foul play. Gotcha. I mean, I feel like I kind of could guess on how far he would go based on what kind of person is and how important this is to him, so, yeah. Well, he's, he's I guess... He's risked his life. I don't... I guess maybe what he could mm -hmm. phys physically do, maybe, is what... Yeah, I, I guess that's know. fair. It's like, you're not sure, like, yeah, the extremes he'll go to and what he is fully capable of, but considering what he's done, it seems like, yeah, he'd be willing to do some serious shit about this. But he definitely doesn't, he doesn't seem comfortable with that idea of like, yeah, what if it is? I ha he has to consider it, and he is, but like, the fuck, you know? Like, how do you deal with that? Maxwell just like, sip his tea and... We probably, I feel like that scene ends there, I don't know that there's really much more to go. Yeah, yeah, no, it's... I think it's a pretty good spot to end. Uh, I'm gonna ask my players. Do you wanna do you wanna deal with assassin crabs right now, or should we take a break and get that, back to that on the the? I think a break would be yeah. great. Yeah, my vote is also yeah. for break, and then we can, we can when we get back, we can deal with Makes assassin sense. crabs. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I figure out a tune for the assassin. Crabs. I've, I've already I've already figured it out. What do you mean? It's the ocean man tune. What do you What do you mean? It's, it's already there. <laughs> All right, I'm taking us over to a break. I was waiting for the most to do it, and I remember that I'm stream managing, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Stand by. See you all in a little bit. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Can we just have no background Schools. music? Just you singing in the background. Assassin's Crab. Stalking, stalking, walking with the plan. There's so much blood on his hands. And then the guitar riff. And I and if you're wondering, yes, I did come open there, by the way. We're live. Hi, friends. Yeah. <laughs> <I saw that. laughs> if you were wondering, we did in fact hold open on the Assassin's Crab. <laughs> Welcome back to Violet Sea, everybody. Take it away, hey, Tate. <laughs> Yeah, welcome back to Violet Sea Twitch. Uh, we're back from a little break. Uh, and yeah, last thing that happened was some pretty heavy stuff between uh, Professor Ozturk and our definitely just a ship historian, Maxwell. Uh, but I would like to sort of bring the scene back in 
on this sort of, I guess, facility slash town that is mostly decimated and the four people who were there uh, realizing that they're about to be ambushed by very sneaky, angry assassin crabs. That's the thing that we are doing a meme on. Uh, so, you guys are approaching this intersection. Wow, this is way more dramatic than I thought it was, this background music. Listen, fam, we here for it. Yeah. So, I would like to know uh, what the four of y'all are gonna do. So, we're trying to catch at least one in a building cage. So, hear me out. Yeah. Uh, just, just hear me out. Yeah. These crabs aren't really found anywhere but this island, right? Oh, not exactly. Yeah, there's some similar ish ones, but. Yeah. Okay, sorry, so, you can go. So, they're, they're fairly rare, and they could be a delicacy. So, if we were to capture two of them, we could breed them and then sell those eggs off and just make bank. Okay, but then we have to, you know, consider, like, you know, humanity <laughs> regulations or, you know, just the ethics of this. Well, I'm no longer human, so I don't consider any sort of human regulation. <laughs> Listen, heck, this is the age of sale. We are so, so yeah. far before the USDA. <laughs> Arden, I, I think you're forgetting that we're in the company of pirates now. <laughs> This is, this is fair, but, you know, um, I thought, you know, we were more the MO of uh, stealing from people. Look, and, how know. About, how about, okay, let me put it <laughs> this way. You would you also get a better crabs? chance to study them. They study their breeding habits, study their offspring, study any variants that might happen if we take them off the island through long-term breeding. So you would get a very, very uh, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to study these things as we, you know, also make a profit. Makes a very good point. So long as, you I know, making the profit is the main to... focus. What? I'd love you to roll some Aether Biology too. Just, just this yeah. is the flavor. I, I would love to do that. Oh my God, I'm dropping dice everywhere. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Don't drop them, I think roll them, silly. Well, these guys what are, are having doing? their argument. It's Listen. Just like keeping out. <laughs> I know. Uh, okay, so that's going to be, okay. Blah. Oh, that's not great. That's not great at all. Uh oh. Um, that's what I, I love to see, actually. They're too. They're, they're <laughs> yeah, too. They're too um, assassiny. You can't. You can't keep um, track of them. Wait, math. So, I, ah, um, that's twelve. A twelve. Fuck really twelve. Not awful. Uh, yeah. So that's a still a comedic success. You don't know how you would do it. But you do know that you're like, as they say that, you're imagining what kind of, I don't know, like enclosure mechanics you would have to do for these creatures. And they would be extremely complicated because they can survive for months at a time out of this aether, but only because they store so much in them. You would basically need a pressure tank to put like some of this ocean aether into for them to live in at most of the time. It's, it'd be complicated, but you're like, I, I, but it's, it's doable. Mostly, kinda. Uh. Yeah, it, it might take a lot more effort and uh, building than it might be worth. Um, just physiologically, how they work, keeping them alive in captivity hasn't really been done um, because the, the upkeep would be a whole lot. Um, also, there's the problem of um, knowing uh, their sex because they look identical until you actually um, have to, you know... Look at Rip the, them open. the yeah. Well, you're talking to two people that are really good at building things, so I think yeah. that's not the problem. All I'm hearing is that we have to catch a lot of them. Mm. That's all I'm hearing, to be perfect. Okay, honest. we're running into the same ethics issue again. We're <laughs> I mean, not oh. sure they'll repopulate, <laughs> that... right? <laughs> that's not the point. Plus, I mean, if we don't, if we don't catch them, and you know. Somebody else will. We're, I mean, just look around. Yeah, We're not know. the only ship around here. Uh, I'd like to point out that this is the kind of time period where when people discover an animal, they tend to kill it, stuff it, and bring it back, and usually the taxidermy is all wonky. It's like that yeah, kind of thing. That's okay. 
That's that's the extent of people bringing animals back from foreign places at this point. <laughs> Zoos are ba barely a thing at this point. Mm -hmm. It's like more like rich people's animal collections. Mm -hmm. None and of these areas. None Menagerie, of these people the word, had a. Uh, none of these people had a Reese or an Oliver. <laughs> so exactly. See, we can at least keep them alive. Okay, if you want to give this a shot, fine, but we're not catching a lot of these, because you're about to see. Once we get to that intersection, it's it's a lot harder than I thought. Alright, so, uh, who wants to bait them into, into one of these buildings? And then we can, we can, you know, I guess I'll freeze them, and then you can transform the building into a cage, right, Reese? Yeah. I would actually love either awareness for most of you guys, but uh, definitely tracking from mm -hmm. our uh, good biologist, Arden. Awareness. They got the best chance of this. Yes. Or anything that you think you could justify of being like, I want to figure out where they're going to be. Yeah, I feel like yeah. insight doesn't nope, really I'm work gonna... animals, but... Yep, I'm going to study passage. Um, All right, that well, that's... an awful roll. <laughs> I, I rolled more than an 18, so I think we're good. <laughs> Okay, that was better. Um, that is a 16. Okay, so, uh, and then what the, are you other two going to roll or are you just going to let them? Like, I rolled, I, I figured awareness plus deduce maybe, but that's like a 13, okay. that's not particularly good. I rolled a 14 for awareness. Yeah, I mean, if I'm, okay. I'll probably do like awareness insight and then that'll put me at uh, 23? Or it's 21, Dang. sorry. 21. Dang, son. Uh, yeah. yeah, so you guys are like kind of putting your heads together. Where are they going to be? Uh, I think you figure out like these ambush predators, if you hug the building on the corner, they're more likely to position themselves on top of that building you're hugging because that's the blind spot. You might have to be obvious about it. Uh, otherwise, they might find other places to ambush you, like just around the corner or wait for you to get closer to another building. But like that's most likely if they are tracking you and they seems like they are, they're going to try and get you from a place you can't see. So putting your blind spot on a building is the most likely way to get them onto that building. Uh, Arden, you can ask me questions, though, because you did study Passage, so. Yeah, um, now that I know that there are multiple, do I know roughly how many there are? Yeah, you would say, uh, this seems like a large pack of them. Like, there's, they probably no. go in pretty large packs if they take out these, uh, sort of dome-shaped guys. Excuse me, excuse uh, me. Per the lyrics, a group of assassin crabs is called a school. Thank you very much. A school. All right. There is a school of these things that, uh, if they're like ones found on other islands that are similar, it could be anywhere between like eight to 20. And you're getting the sense it's closer to that 20. Oh my God. <laughs> but again, okay. you, you only have to give them a real good sucker punch mm -hmm. and most of them will scatter. They don't like things yeah. that can attack back, especially with big, loud explosion type things. Which, um, fun, uh, real world, uh, fact, most crustacean groups are called colonies. <laughs> heck facts! But, uh, facts. yeah. Heck facts. Hashtag heck, heck facts. Hashtag heck, heck truths! truths. Heck right, heck I gave, truths. I gave it to you. That's how, that's yours. Branded, baby, that's hashtag yours. Heck truths. Hashtag okay. heck truths. There you go. There it All is. Right, I'm, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start using that more. Bang. Um, All yours. For free. But, yeah, okay. When's so the Z Frank episode coming out about the assassin crabs? <laughs> As an okay. insight, I uh, rolled three d6 to decide the number of these things, and they all came up six. Oh, great, cool. <laughs> um, okay. Y'all gonna die. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I would like to know more about their attack patterns. Do they attack more as like groups of three or four at a time? Do they go all twenty at a time? Is it just one like leader of the colony that's like gonna show up mm. and be like yo what's good like 
Oh, I, <laughs> what's good? I, I actually... Put a roll up on a gang, like, what's good? Because we have Sorry. Sir Heckalot, the actual biologist here. I'm gonna let you decide that. Okay. Um. Yeah, because, like, I'm trying to think, like, in terms of social interaction with crustaceans, they're just, like... There isn't that much in terms of like you know this is working more together. Like a school of fish. This is more like a school of fish that have developed crab-like uh, armor. To be honest. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So that a would change things because like they try to coordinate. How they're built. Yeah, like fish. Yeah, because like fish behavior then would be more um, a means of obscuring individuals, basically. So I think. Mm -hmm. They would probably, like, not all attack at once, but if anything, the behavior might be, like, circling a group of people or one person or one creature, whatever, circling the prey mm -hmm. and then causing basically this, um, like, a double team kind of effect. Um, like, yeah. just using, like, Pokemon reference here, kind of a double team yeah. and then one individual kind of striking out from that. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. think that just combining this lore, they tend to try and find a blind spot until they can, like, all pounce and then do this sort of encircling thing where they're jumping in and yeah. out. And, uh... So, yeah, that's, uh... You have one more question if you want to ask it. Or you can hold it okay. for later if you want. Yeah, I'll hold it for later. These are just kind of good right. things. So, yeah, you know how they're gonna work, and so they're likely to just swarm you from a blind spot. Uh... So, next best move. Move. What'd you do? Well, I don't think at any point we should ever have our backs to the outside of our group. If we could go back to back, everyone, I think that's going to be our best chance at not getting blindsided. Okay. okay. Um, I mean, just, you know, you know the most about how these guys move, so just mm -hmm. tell me when and I'll, I guess, gravity pull them into the building and then ice to freeze and then Reese will just make a big cage. And we'll work from there? Maybe? Hopefully. It's, uh, this seems like one of the, um, larger limits of a typical packs, so, um, be ready. There's, there's going to be an intimidating number, but again, if uh, we give them a show, a lot of them will just scatter. All right, yeah. It tur turns out ambush predators that work in packs don't like a fight. Yeah, <laughs> they're actually incredibly lazy. <laughs> like, oh, okay, I don't, that's so much effort. I don't want to do that. Fun out of character fact, that's a massive hit for a future only war campaign I'm going to run. That's all I'm saying anyway. <clears throat> Ooh, okay. Uh, so yeah, you guys get to this intersection and you're sort of positioning yourself so that you're pretty sure they're basically have climbed up the side of the building. And I think that you guys who are really aware, especially uh, Oliver who rolled really well, you can hear like some extremely light, like clicking of these claws on some of these metal and uh, stone structures uh, as you get there. And uh, what I'd like to do is specifically Arden and Oliver as the two who rolled really well, you get to decide at what moment or position that you start this. If you're going to wait for them to encircle you, or are you going to try and, like, sucker punch them while they're on the building? I think you can assume that there's some, like, around the corner as you're about to get to it, as well as you hear vaguely on the top this just click, click, a uh, small rustle, stuff like that. What do you I mean... think? At least, like, for your marble ability, um... I feel like having a bunch there would be more beneficial for you, so yeah. you can just kind of all hit at once. Yeah, so I was thinking, like, as they're on the building and around the building, just a Camarble in the building that just pulls them all in. Okay. Okay. So yeah, uh, you guys sort of just have this communication almost more with your eyes because you've already planned this and you both hear it. And then what I want to do is, uh, Oliver, roll me some of your uh, your magic stuff. You don't have to roll to, like, throw the marble. This is entirely how are you shaping this, because you're just popping gotcha. this in a window, basically. That's plot. Okay. So... That's a 17. Ooh, well, 
let's see. All right, so you pop this marble in, and this building is a uh, moderately sized one, and out of nowhere, just the whole thing crunches in on itself, and you hear... You're not sure what sound, like, crabs or fish are supposed to make when they can breathe oxygen, but it <laughs> sounds like a horrid, like, kind of squeaky shriek Uh-uh, no, 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 Tate, I need, a, I need a recreation of the crab sound immediately. Oh, no, go. I know what you're going to do. Go, go, Tate. Uh, you ever hear the lobster being boiled? I need the sound, Tate. I need you to do it. <laughs> I can't do that with my voice. It sounds like... <laughs> that's enough. That's enough. That's all I need. That's all I needed. I needed that right there. Thank you very much. No, I thought you were going. Okay, I thought you were going to insist that it was the pufferfish sound. I would have been so angry nope. at you. <laughs> no, it sounds a little bit like a high-pitched tea kettle, and a lot of them, but like a chorus oh of them. That's actually really funny. <laughs> I love that. I love that a lot. That makes me very happy. As this thing collapses in, and now uh, you guys are in time to play, but uh, because you guys acted first, each of you can do a thing. Uh, this building has collapsed, and you see these bluish, greenish things uh, fall in. They are kind of almost dog-shaped, uh, but their front claws are a little bigger, and you can see as they scramble, they can sort of sit on their back claws with their, like, lobster-ish tail. It's, uh, again, more fish-shaped, so it's not like the lobster that it's sideways, it's like up and down. But they can sort of sit on it with these upper ones, and it looks like they can sort of pounce and attack with these upper claws to pinch you there, and then start biting the crap out of you. Y'all went outside and found motherfucking Left for Dead hunter crabs. Good fucking luck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pray for y'all. <laughs> and, uh, you, you guys uh, managed to get, like, 14, you think, 14 of them have all collapsed in this building and are scrambling to get up as there's, like, rubble and stuff around them, and the other four that were around the corner have, like, jumped back, and you can see there's this moment where they're seriously considering, like, do we care about our friends who have all just gotten monched by a building? And, uh, yeah, each of you can do a thing. I'm well, just... I'd almost, yeah, I would defer to anyone else that was making the cage first. Yeah, I was just going to toss. Yeah, I'm, okay, I'll just, I'm going to toss my uh, freezing marble and turn to Reese and go, Reese, now, as it goes off. All right. Uh, I mean, basically, all I'm going to do is throw my hands onto the building and then just channel um, to reform it into a, a cage, so... Yeah, this is going to be a lot of material for you, so you're uh, very likely going to suffer consequences if you don't roll very well at this. Not a problem. Let me look at that here. This is... But yeah, you do have complex shapes, so... I'm going to say you're going to have to use complex shapes to technically do this. A cage is like three different things at a time. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was trying to figure out. I was like, am I, am I looking at two? Am I looking at three? All right. Yeah, I'm going to say so... uh, just spend an additional point just to attempt this, and then you can spend more points to make yourself better at it. All right. So that's a 13, and then I'll pump in two more points to make it a 15. I'm sorry, can we just, can we not say pump in points anymore as ever, ever again? Just, can that just not be, can that just not be the terminology we use for spending points in this system? I'll accept dumping points, I'll accept burning points, I'll accept cutting points, I, any, anything besides... <laughs> Are you going to be okay? <laughs> no. So you start... Uh, so, Reese, you slam your hands to the ground, and you just can feel, even as you form it, that the metal that, like, makes the structure of these buildings is actually, like, hammered into the ground to give it a foundation, almost. So there's a lot more metal than you think, and even as you form it, you're like, oh, this metal is super reactive to aether. 
like, it is magic as shit, and you find that it's very easy to bend, and as you do it, you're like, I don't know that I would have been able to do this otherwise, because it is a struggle to make this massive cage. Uh, it's as you form it, because you got a 15, uh, you manage to get most of them, but, like, four more manage to jump out uh, as it's sort of the cage is forming around them. And so, uh, Oliver, if you want to roll that uh, ice magic to see if you can slow them down. Yes. Oh, boy. Uh, that's a 20. Oof. Well, damn. The uh, dice have been very happy I'm today. Roll a thing. So happy that I found them. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh yeah the four who try to escape you just throw the marble right at them and you actually make more of like an ice wall that uh one or two of them kind of get stuck in and then the cage crunches in as it slowly tightens up uh the other two if you want to do something about the four that are still sort of debating they in this moment if they're gonna attack or not I'm going to say, uh, Arden, you can definitely use some of your emotionancy at this point. You don't have to make an assumption about these things. You know enough about them and how they function. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think I'm not going to worry about those four just because they, like, I think we posed enough of a threat at this point that they're just going to scram. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of have a question. So, first of all, like, first action I'm mm -hmm. probably going to do is uh, start channeling. Well, Mancy still. Yeah. Um, and in terms of my enhanced emotion, does, if I fail, does that mean they like the other party no longer feels the emotion that I'm trying to enhance? Like, is there a way that I can like kind of like take it away, almost? I'm gonna say enhancing emotion is more like you can suppress an emotion as part of that. Okay, then... The you're effectively enhancing is, like, apathy or calm instead of, like, aggression. Okay. Because, okay. um, yeah, I would like to try to do that instead and just, like, calm them down because this is really fucking scary for them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the consequence of failing is more you get blowback from their actual yeah. emotional okay. state. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm willing to risk that. That's fine. Y'all down here playing crab wrangler. Heck, over here is the the, the, the crab whisperer. I ain't mad about it. Oh my god. Um, you, you okay, Foxy? I'm really not, guys. All right, let me see what role this is. Um, okay. Yeah, that's a willpower. I'll probably use that. I think that's the higher one of these. Yes, yes, it is. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Uh, all right, don't fuck me, dice. <laughs> oh no. Uh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, kind of fucked me a little bit. Um, they they kind of did. Um, because let's see, that's yeah, that's a that's a nine. Uh, oh no. Ooh, not yeah, great. great. Well, if you want to spend points, you can enhance oh, that. That's, yeah, I forgot you can do that. Um, yeah, and you can only go up to three, right? Yeah, only three, unless you have an ability that says otherwise, and the only one who has that is Maxwell's spy shit. Yeah, um, no, I'll, yeah, I'll just use three points. That's fine. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, you only really need to use two, because, uh, that'll get you to the next success category. Just, oh, perfect. You know, spend two, and, right, uh, cool. yeah, so you push out emotionally against these things, just trying to be like, calm down and there's a moment where you mostly have done this against people or like animals that are a little closer to you on sort of the evolutionary tree and emotions are more similar to yours mammals and things like that uh these things are very alien to you and for a second the the just bizarre shape of their concept of fear almost overwhelms you uh you do take one mental damage or you have to spend sure. another mental point to avoid that, but you take a small amount of damage as like that terror nearly makes you break, but then you push through and you're like, no. And eventually yeah. you see them all like, they scrambled and they're like rattling the cage. Uh, you can see them actually run up and around to the side. Like they can climb so easily on this thing. And then eventually they sort of all like just stop. 
some of them on the ceiling and the walls of this thing, some of them on the floor, and they just, they don't like relax as much as they're just frozen in a moment. Uh, and yeah, uh, was there something that uh, Quinn wants to do? The not magic person here? <laughs> There's a four outside the cage if you really wanted to intimidate them or something, but you can see that they're pretty much uh, about to scramble. I mean, like, Quinn, Quinn's main priority here is to uh, to protect these guys, so I think what uh, Quinn's going to do is just, like, step in front of the group and prepare for any sort of retaliation mm -hmm. from the ones on the uh, outside. Yeah. Can you actually uh, roll me... Uh, yeah, Intimidate. I believe you have a uh, four in that. Just as you sort of stand in between them and just puff yourself up bigger with a big old knife. Eh. 11 plus, yeah. uh, yeah, plus four, so that's a 15. Yeah, you just sort of step up and this universal language of all creatures of don't fuck with me, just that broader stance, chest out, just like, nope, don't do it. And uh, you see, again, those four crabs who all, you've all done this basically at the same time. And the four of them like skitter backwards, mm -hmm. not looking away from you, and then fully break and just sprint away. Just scramble like wild dogs away from you. And yeah, you've managed to capture 14 of these things in a pretty sizable cage. Uh, it's surprising how compact these guys can be considering their size. Like, they do not mind at all being at super close quarters with each other, it seems. Possibly a side effect of their sort of circling uh, scramble attack that they do. But, uh, yeah. You uh, have that. Uh, and it's as this calms down that, uh, Reese, you notice, and mercifully, that the building that has just collapsed is not the one that, like, pings your memory. But the one, like, across, like, kitty corner, the other side of this intersection, there's something about it. You're, like, really sure it was some sort of, like you mentioned before, like, maybe a mail center or, like, a library? Like, you, the documents of some kind are here. And, uh, it seems maybe important to you. Yeah, uh, so we got, we got the crabs, um... Mm -hmm. I mean, we do need to figure out how we're going to get them back to the ship. Uh, but there's You're a building sure over you there. You just get a ship to fly next to it. Bruh, like, I do not want your crabs on my ship. I'm sorry. That's, that's, I don't, I don't, I don't know you that well, dog. Like, <laughs> there's a, there's a building over there, uh, that I need to go into. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they'll be fine in there for a while. It's not a big building. Like, you're not going to get lost in there. So you can easily approach it. There is what used to be a doorway, but obviously any wood that used to be there is just gone. Uh, and yeah, I'd like for you to uh, do a little uh, searching. I feel like that would be maybe notice, maybe uh, deduce. How many do I have? Uh, I'd actually need to get to your... I'll allow insight because you're trying to be like, where would I have put this thing that I'm looking for? All right. Uh, but honestly, would be... your deduce, your notice are about the same. Or your, your deduce and your insight are about the same, so... So, if I do with insight, it's going to be an 18. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah, you enter this building and you can see what looks like the remains of like a countertop. Uh, sorry, I'm going to change the music to something more chill. Action is over. Deduction time. Underground Tango Nights. Shout out to Foxy for finding some of these great, great sounds. They're so good. Uh, yeah, so you find it looks like the remains of maybe a counter of some kind, and then like a whole bunch of, I guess, lockers? Like this is the equivalent of what they would do for like a, maybe a P.O. box or something. Uh, or like a bank for holding important things 
you're not sure why you might have left something here, but as you go through these just racks and racks of these various size containers that all had locks at one point, and many of them are eaten through, you find one that the front of it's eaten through, but the shape of it is so familiar to you. And when you open it, there is a box of a far more refined metal that just, you're like, I know I bought this or I had it. This is mine. Like you're, sh you're sure this is a box of yours. And it's extremely corrosive resistant. Like it's designed to really protect whatever is in it. Okay. Uh, am I able to open that box? Uh, you realize that you made this box with your matter formation magic. There are no like seals in it. You will have to use magic to basically, it is a perfect box with no openings, but you can just use your magic to open it anyways. So I'm going to stash it um, and open it on the ship. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that way anything that's in there doesn't get lost while we're crab wrangling. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. That's kind of the stuff that you find here. Uh, you can quite easily get back to the ship. There's not any more. Like, this is a pretty big pack, and yeah, Arden, you would be able to know that uh, these packs are kind of territorial, so there's probably not another pack around uh, at least close by. So, you're probably fine. Uh, those four that are around are definitely not going to do shit about that. They're not about to fight four people, let alone a whole, whole crew. And as far as the logistics of getting the crab cage on there, it's not that much bigger than something you might put, like, uh, some of the stuff that you might have on the ship anyways when you're, like, in the hold. And you can, you, like, have the mechanisms for flying over it and just rigging it back onto the ship. The only problem is, as you get back to the ship, is, uh, what does Dre think about hey, we got a bunch of attack crabs in a box. So let me get this straight. We say as, as the camera cuts back to Dre and is like kind of panning back down to the frozen cage full of assassin crabs. Mm -hmm. You found a bunch of murder crabs and thought we needed pets? No, no, Captain, hear me out. Uh-huh. These are a delicacy. You don't really... Okay, can, none of that, that is not easily, what we agreed on. You, you okay. You can't really Stop. easily get a hold of these. Stop. I don't know what that word means. Okay, look. Let's just say we can sell them for a lot of money if we breed them. Now we're talking. I've agreed... I've agreed... To let the scientist people study them as we breed them. Uh, but we, we can breed them and sell the eggs for a lot of money okay one don't make grievance on, my, on behalf of my ship anymore ever again two you're a genius and i love you come up here so i can kiss your face <laughs> his strange like metal structure of a face you can just put a little smooch on you heard it's what i said warm like, the whole machine is making uh is making a lot of heat i guess it's like human body temperature okay so besides monopolizing the assassin crab market Y'all find anything else cool out there? I mean, the metal this cage is made out of is something else, and I just, like, tap it. Huh. Really? What can you tell me about it? It a musical quality. Huh. When you tap it, it's like, oh, that's a nice note. Huh. Interesting. Did you say note? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no, you said the wrong word. Musical. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> just, huh. Interesting. What can you tell me about it? Well, for one, it's, uh very light and it conducts aether really well and um i mean it was used as sort of the skeleton for all the buildings here hmm incredible yeah this might have been a pretty good find after all not after yeah, that crew stuff. so what can do what can we do with it i have some ideas of my own but outside of that well, for one, I think... You can roll me some material science if you want to ask very specific questions about it. Well, I'm damn sure Ooh. not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely speaking to Quinn, not to insult Dre, but that's not the thing he is good at. Well, then you were actually talking to Oliver and not Quinn, because Quinn's also... <laughs> Quinn's, Quinn's slightly less dumb than Dre is, but that's not by much. So, so, yeah, no. 
Sorry, Oliver, I got names wrong. Yeah, it's alright. It's uh, like being the tallest dwarf. And now that now that all combat things are over, I rolled a 13. Ooh, of course, now we get the good rolls. Hey. <laughs> I mean, 13's not horrible, it's a comedic success. You can ask me three questions, but one of them is gonna be wrong. Hmm. Uh, let's see. So we already know it's conductive, we already know it's very light. Um... Mm -hmm. Is this a material found anywhere besides the floating continent? Uh, you would say no. It seems like it's a special refinement process to make it. So, like, the material it's made of, you could probably find other places, like the base metal, but this version of it, no. Gotcha. This is a pretty unique, like, refinement of some metal. Does it have any purposes besides building, like, reinforcement? Mm. You you think they could have used it for a lot? You haven't seen other uses, but like, yeah, probably. It's light, like you said. It's durable, like you know. It's conductive. You just don't know that they did anything else. You could think of a few. Gotcha. Um, let's see. Does processing it further destroy its uniqueness? Or like, undo the special process it's already been through. Lucian, you're so fucking smart. I never thought of that. That's a really good question. <laughs> Thanks. That's also has a very complicated answer that I don't know <laughs> you'd really get out of that if theoretically, no, but like you don't know the process that made it. So you'd be doing a gotcha. new process to this. Right. Okay. Um... Yeah, I mean, this is really good stuff. Like, it's super aether conductive. Um, I'm sure Reese can have can find many uses for it, just on his own. Uh, but beyond that, it's like this is the only place to get it. So, it's like we nobody knows how to make it besides the people that don't really exist anymore. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Just for free. Oh, I'm You're sorry. I'm sure you could reverse engineer this if you spent some time to like figure out what they did. But you're gonna need like. Right. Scrape off a sample, do some chemical shit, and figure this out. Now, depending on, you know, how much of a portion you want to trust me with, I could probably figure out, you know, some way of producing more of it. It just might take, you know, some time and effort. Yeah. Is, is this box hmm? the same metal? Uh, Actually, okay. as you tap it, yeah, you think that the box that you have is at least... In the same ballpark, uh, I don't know how to really describe it more than like construction grade and uh, like jewelry grade of the same metal, maybe. So like you think it's on the same spectrum of the same process that made it. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull Oliver aside and I'm gonna show him the box and I'm just gonna be like, hey, let me get this open, then you can take the box and you can study it to your heart's content. Now that is something special. I... Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> yep. Hell of a good find, crew. Let's get these things up on board and... Well, put the crabs in the brig for now. This box can be used for some other things. Break it down and see whatever you can use it for. Save a bit of it, though. I need a new sword. Also, uh... Doc? Watch your mouth. We still exist. Or we will. Soon. And hey, who knows? Maybe and, uh, in, maybe after a while I can give you back your people's technique. <laughs> yeah. I'd appreciate that, actually. Hmm. Uh, on that note, Ozturk has been examining the cage and the box. He seems very uninterested in the crabs, and at one point you have to, like, pull him away from the cage because one of their claws, like, tries to get out at him because he's, like, too close. It's like he's kind of forgot they're there, and he's like, oh, this is a great metal. It's like, eh, Doc, this is not... Yeah, easy, this bud. This is not an empty box, my man. There are murder crabs in there, friend. It's like, ah, oh, yes, of course. And then still, like, is trying to look at it at a more respectful distance. Hey, right, you sad sack, stop looking around. Get moving. He says to, like, vague crew members around. It's a heavy box down there. Help the girl out. But, uh, yeah, you guys have managed to get uh, some water. There's actually a nearby stream since you're kind of close to the foot of the mountain. And, uh... 
just as part of the world setting, all these islands and continents are basically absorbing aether uh, through the bottom of them and then piping water out. At this height, it's mostly just collecting water from the atmosphere at this point, but there are rivers that come out of these mountains near where the aether hearts are. And so you do have some clean water. Uh, there's not really any wood to repair the ship, so I think that there's uh, a lot of work to be done by Reese to like fix some of the scratches and dents and things that happen during your escape, but... All right. Uh, how much? How much metal? Because I remember we looted metal uh, from the from the one set of people. How like how much steel or like aether metal and stuff do we actually have available? Is it a good amount? I, I would assume so. Uh, his, oh, his headphones take. just broke. If we... yep. yeah. Oh, oh, whoops. Just peep that. Uh, my fault. So, we're going to do a quick little break. We'll be right back as we get uh, some tech things figured out. Don't go anywhere, loves. We'll be right back. Bye. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We are back. My microphone no longer wants to die. Smooth. And, uh... Hey. That sounds good. So where we last left uh, off, we were bringing some murder crabs onto our ship. Mm -hmm. And and there was a metal box. Yeah, if I remember exactly, uh, Reese had just offered uh, to Oliver that if he could get his box open, he, that sounded horrible. He was like, <laughs> he, he was he would let he would let Oliver ex experiment on his box. <laughs> Stop! Stop! Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna play with this box once it's done with it. Fuck! Get it open. Stop! Stop! Okay, okay. Right and lastly, lastly, I believe uh, Reese was asking, failed asking in character as Reese was asking uh, how much Aether steel we managed to get uh, from this, you know, from from our from our hall, and that's kind of where we cut out at. So I think we should pick back up right there. Everybody cool with that, possibly? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was not, I didn't get to hear that steel part. So yeah, sounds good. There you go, I got you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, basically I'm asking how much steel do we have in reserves? Like we, we looted some people, uh, we picked up some metal there. We just picked up some more metal here. Like how much overall would we have available on the ship? Uh, the stuff you've looted is a whole lot more. And it is a different metal than the stuff you have on the island. Uh, the stuff that you looted was like specifically made for conducting aether. The stuff on the island is maybe a similar deal, but is not, uh, I don't know how to say, it's not the same process, it's not the same base metal. It could be used similarly. Uh, the stuff in the cage is very much durable is the uh, main point of its making. And the uh, stuff that's the box is like, anti-corrosive is what it was for is like this is never going to wear down uh so they're all three very different categories you can't really break down the cage much unless you want to make a new one otherwise you have assassin crabs on your ship now so uh, i mean basically what i'm what i'm trying to get at uh like what i'm trying to figure out here is if oliver and i work together uh on figuring out you know some of the techniques um especially for like the corrosiveness um instead of repairing the ship with wood we slowly start to convert the ship to a lightweight aether steel build with nice wood paneling so that it looks very sleek but is very very hard to damage and very corrosive resistant hmm not a bad idea i would say uh you do not have enough to do that like the whole outside of the ship the amount of aether you got is like you could build a statue or like a large uh like safe maybe one room but not enough to cover the whole outside of the ship you could use it to reinforce parts of the ship and maybe slowly replace it but you do not have remotely enough and the cage kind of the same thing the combination of both of those you could i don't know like change the prow of the ship to be super durable or the sails like one element of the ship but not the whole hull like that's a lot more material. Okay. Hmm. So yeah, I think we're putting the crabs in the brig. Yeah, was the game plan? 
That's probably the best idea. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's that, throw sounds, them. that sounds good. We'll throw them in there. Uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep them locked down in there for a good bit. Otherwise, uh, I guess, I don't know, all you have to worry, like, worry about with the, the steel, I mean, as requested, you know, Dre would like a new sword, you know, if one of y'all gets in time. Uh, but uh, outside of that, I mean, he's mostly waiting for his, uh, his scouting parties to come back in, so he's gonna, you know, hang out for the next couple days. I don't really know if we had, like, I don't know. I'm, well, like, yeah. I'm gonna just, like, smooth that out, that your scouting parties know the direction you're going, like, you already knew where this vault is. Mm. You just had to get there so they can meet you there. All right, sweet. And uh, Officer is like, we do need to get going. Otherwise, we're not going to... Uh, we're not going to get there in time. Like, he's not sure how long it's going to take to open that thing. You heard the prof. Way anchors. Let's move. That was a good plan. <laughs> so, yeah. You guys uh, set sail. Lifting in the air as you've managed to get this... Uh, crab cage into the hold and you're to be clear you can't really reuse that metal right now these things will try and tear through the side of your ship it's made of wood that's fine so uh but you know uh you arden you have some time to sort of study them and anatomy and you i think can figure out just the logistics of can we get one and uh take it out and uh butcher it for food so you do have that food source as well yeah we'll do uh, Quinn's gonna accompany uh, Arden down there to just like be like ready for dismantling. Crab time! <laughs> Crab time! Mm. Anybody Crab thinking Rangoon? Yeah. Let's see, there's enough meat. Oh, there's gonna be definitely enough meat. Never passing a good. Oh, for sure. Oh yeah. So uh. Yeah, I mean, if you two want to roll for that just to see how successful you are, uh, I'll sure. take uh, Aether G and help with uh, kitchen skills or cooking. All right. Somebody about to lose an arm. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess, like, can I try to assist with uh, homie cooking as well? Yeah, as specific you to can. You? Yeah, you can roll homie cooking while uh, Arden rolls Aether Biology. Hmm. Okay. Let me flip back that. Yeah, it's knowledge. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Arden, you can add three to your roll from homie cooking. Oh, okay. Uh, that, Quinn, that's Quinn, really. You can add two to your roll from Arden's aether biology. Got it. Okay, that would make a fifteen for me then. Okay, and you can spend points. Uh, fifteen mm. is uh, still it's a comedic one off. success. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's you know, yeah. I'll yeah. just use one point. Yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and do that. Make that sixteen. Quinn, do you want to spend a point? Yeah, sure. One point. Yeah, okay. Uh, you're about to rest anyways, so this is just like at mm -hmm. the end of the day as you're going out, you uh, decide to, you know, dig into how does this assassin crab work. Uh, you manage to wrangle one out of the cage. Uh, I think, Reese, you can just easily have put a door in it at this point. Uh, it doesn't take much. So it's really about like, uh, Quinn, I'm imagining you basically get like a knife or a meat hook and you just like grab the crook of one pull it out, open the door, close the door very quickly while Arden, you're sort of like suppressing their emotions a bit so they don't try and rush out. And uh, it takes a quick motion to disable it and then kill it so it's not gonna attack you because it does not like being held, it turns out. Uh, and you sort of can lay it out. And uh, Quinn, your experience with this would be more from like a butchery standpoint. You notice like all the chinks in the armor and this is where you would put a knife to like break this apart and that. Well, uh, Arden, yours is more of a biology of, like, what did each of these pieces do functionally? Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah, the first thing you learn is this is definitely more like a fish than it is a crab, both in, uh, like, in its, how it's built. It is really like a fish that has armor on. Uh, but, Quinn, you would find that the meat is far more like a, uh, like, crab consistency. And it doesn't have the internal skeleton. Like, it is an external skeleton that it's all attached to. It's sort of an odd combination that way. And it's, uh, it's not toxic. Uh, it doesn't have like the best flavor. It is kind of gamey. Uh, it's a little tough. But, you know, nothing that uh, the right spices and a lot of, a lot of boiling isn't gonna fix. Uh, if you have, I'll let you guys ask some specific questions if you wanted to know something exactly about it. 
Hmm. I'll let Arden go first. Hmm. I don't know. Um, That's fine. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like she would just be like, or they, sorry, would be um, just sketching everything. Just how mm -hmm. pieces fit together and all that. Yeah, and you managed to do so without uh, losing a finger. This thing's uh, yeah. <laughs> sort of jaws are very much like that cross between fish and crustacean that it has just like some heavy mandible jaws that uh, fit together into a lower piece. It almost looks like it's either on the way to having detached mandibles or it once was and it's fused together, like evolutionarily speaking. Uh, you don't know what a youth of one of these would look like. Uh, and you would assume that their life cycle is that they don't, like, they don't have uh, offspring while it's the island is about to break the surface and then be out here because you don't think that their mm -hmm. offspring would like survive that. Uh, but it's it's a pretty sturdy little bugger, and definitely the claws are not a pleasant, like you don't want this uh, grabbing you. you. This is not a cuddly thing. Uh, I would say that part of this is you observe how they act in this cage, and you kind of observe how they acted out there. They're probably a little smarter than your average, like, school of fish that do these same tactics. Like, they almost maybe have a social structure that you haven't really defined yet. So, I don't know. Hmm. It has at least two of the three markers for, like, being able to be domesticated, which is weird and interesting. Uh, it definitely has a family structure, and it probably reproduces pretty fast when it's not, you know, out here. It just isn't very friendly. Like, it's going to be kind of hard to wrangle this alive outside of this box. So, eh? So what you're saying is if we give one group of these a pair of glasses and we give another group of these a magic conch shell, we're going to have some very interesting societies build up. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm more saying that if you could somehow live down in the aether with them, these things might be really good dogs. <laughs> but, you know, they don't really survive out here for super long. So, eh. Anyways, that's sort of the adventures of uh, the crabs. They taste all right. Uh, Quinn, you managed to make whatever dish that you're imagining. It just takes a little more preparation than you would have thought for, like, if it was a regular crab. Hey. <laughs> there's just I feel like there's a lot of things that Quinn is just currently working on right um mm -hmm. like I think uh specifically right the sh outer shell is being used to make like soup stock um mm -hmm. and I think Quinn's like actually kind of curious about like the uh the the un undershell pattern because the undershell pattern for crabs right differs between male and female so like <laughs> is like trying to like i guess like get like a bit of a look at like okay so like how do i tell the difference right when i want if if somebody wants to like say eat the eggs or whatever right um it's very much an internal structure thing that you basically either have to have this thing paralyzed or dead to notice like it's not easy yeah uh, um yeah no i i think right at this point like uh quinn is like having the time of their of of, of his life just like pulling out like different pieces of meat right like cracking open mm. the uh the, the the claws to get the claw meat right um mm. and just just trying to figure out like okay so how how long is it like should it really be like boiled or cooked or steamed even mm -hmm. oh yeah there's a lot of experimentation here uh you're definitely debating with some of the organs like do we cook this do we throw it away i don't know and it's it's a whole process and uh, that process takes a day or so and that's how long it takes for you eventually to get to the spot on the mountain that you're trying to get to. Uh, I'm gonna change the tone of the scene a little bit. Maybe this is the right one, let's figure out. Yeah, I can take that. So you guys uh, manage to get to the side of the mountain where this uh, facility is. Those of you who are part of the academics, you recognize this. It was something you'd been looking for, and it had actually been, like, shifted around the mountain. Uh, if there okay. was a music swap, we didn't get it. Or I didn't get it. Like, stream, like, stream didn't get it. If there, was a, if there was a music swap. So I'm gonna, like, hit stop and then try it again. 
like hit. You're like, not hearing the. I mean, if you if you were keeping like the, the music never the, the music never like never switched up. Like it's still the, it's still that same like tango tango vibe that it kind of was before. Like did it? It just changed for me. Did it switch for it me? Changed for me. Really it's, cool. Yeah, it has it has a spot for me at all. Mm. Here, uh, press stop for me real quick. It has stopped. It is still going for me. Let me uh, rejoin. Wow, wow, wow. Here, let me fix that now. Stand by. Well, meanwhile, uh, like... He's doing that. Yeah, so <laughs> it's this, like, set of buildings that is way more preserved because you can tell it was probably some kind of bunker or military operation almost. Uh, I'm going to start the music again just to see if Foxy can pick it up, but... Sure can. Ah, perfect. So, yeah, uh... And you would all know that just generally these large continents, but even small islands, uh, a <coughs> lot of the time you will dig near the island heart just so you can see it and know where it is, but you will keep that pathway extremely, uh, what's the word, like defended. Like you don't just let anybody walk up to this almost perfect sphere of metal that's at the heart of every island or there's several for larger ones. Uh, you don't just let people walk up to that usually. So it's... Uh, the outside of it is this hardened, you think, concrete that has been treated in some way that even the uh, animals around here don't like to deal with it. It is, however, on the side of a mountain, these sort of three buildings, and so the ship can't really land land, uh, at least for a little while. So you have to sort of land a certain distance away and hike up is going to be the plan. But for now, you can get dropped off right here if you want to investigate and just have the ship sort of be on your call for when you send a signal for it to come get you. But that's sort of <coughs> up to you as to how you want to operate that. So our plan is to land and hike, or just kind of sit around and explore for a bit and keep the ship nearby us? Yeah, like they can drop you off and the ship can go land if you want to just drop off here. Depends on how much crew you want to take with you. Hmm. I mean, I don't think we need too much more than just the party and maybe Ozturk for now, you know? Maybe one or two other, other dedicated folks. So maybe I'm thinking we could. So we could just go in, go now, you know. <laughs> Seems fair. Yeah, uh, let's keep the ship mobile for now and uh, keep the ship in the air. Let's go on our own. Let's find the vault, and then when we find it, we can find a good landing spot. Bring the ship in nice and close. Yeah. So yeah, you <coughs> all dropped off at these sort of bunkers. Uh, your first mate, Cantoni, is at the helm, and he's like, "I'll await your signal." And you, in fact, do have like a flare gun. I'll uh, well, put sorry, up on the other hip. Yeah, yeah, no, you're fine. All right, now we're good. Yeah, I'll, I'll start with uh, a flare gun on the other side of my hip, beside, uh, on the side of my, on my pistol. Just, thank you, first mate. Keep it close. Stay alert. Hi, hi Captain. He says as you uh, are just rope laddered down uh, in front of these three buildings. Come on, you uh, sad You want to live forever? Let's move. Yeah, uh, Osterk needs to be helped a little bit as he nearly slips, but he's he does. fine. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> there oh, are, okay. help. yeah, there are two, like, there's two side buildings that Osterk says, oh, don't worry about those. We already looked through them. And you can see they don't have, like, a lot to them. They're basically, like, a guard post and then a larger building that is, like, probably, uh, like an outdoor supply room. Uh, it's the main one that you can see goes into the mountain that he's more interested in. He's like, Sits there for a second. And yeah, the other three academics, you would be realize this is about as far as you got before. Uh, and also, Reese, you would realize uh, you kind of recognize this building. This isn't where they found you. You could draw a direct line to the east of here. There is a uh, moderately sized town that is still mostly intact that you woke up in. And they kind of, <coughs> you kind of signaled them as they were leaving. But this, these buildings look familiar to you. Uh, there's nothing in the supply room, uh, the supply building, that you do kind of check, I assume, just to be sure. But everything that would have been in there has long rotted away or been eaten away in some way. Uh, and this big, this one main building that's going into the mountain has a large set of steel doors uh, that are locked. Huh. Well, interesting. Guess if you want to get in here and figure out for a bit, we gotta crack these doors open. What's easy? Uh, go for it. <laughs> Ostrich's like, yeah, we don't have to worry about these doors. Uh, I wouldn't recommend exploding them, 
Uh, but these are not the vault doors. This is just the front one. Doctor, floor is yours. All right. Just gonna walk up. I mean, <laughs> just to be funny, mm -hmm. just gonna push on the doors and be like, ah, <laughs> and try to push them open. There's, this is not happening. You, you can't roll for that. Splendid effort. It's not opening. Yeah. <coughs> uh, all right, I'm gonna uh, and just infuse them. And, uh, ooh. You said we don't want to blow them up, right? That was the idea. I say to Trick Captain. Ostrick would, well, I mean, we don't know what's on the other side. There could be some valuable records uh, to at least our archaeological study. But hey, if that's, we gotta. That's fair. Uh, instead, then, I'm going to take some time and just essentially thermal cycle the doors. <laughs> Basically, repeatedly heat and cool it and heat and cool it to make it as brittle as possible. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'm going to say uh, two ability points or uh, mental points for your magic to do that, but uh, I'll have you roll. You're going to succeed. It's just going to be, are there consequences to that success or not? Right. <coughs> uh, what am I adding to this? Uh, your uh, Aether Matter skill. Okay. Uh... And then probably mental point, or uh, uh, mental stat. I'll say knowledge. This is a pretty, like, science-y right. thing to do. Uh, that'll be 15. 15. Uh, yeah. This is a comedic success in that you, like, do the door, like, you're thermal cycling the doors, and eventually we, even the people out that are not doing this can see the doors, like, expand and shrink. And then eventually, uh, the sort of central locking mechanism between the two of them, uh, snaps loudly, and, uh, the doors do, like, fall on you a little bit, and you have to scramble out of the way. So, uh... Either take one damage or spend one ability point to avoid that, as you kind of have to dodge out of the way of this metal. Yeah, I'll, I'll spend on you. a point to run away from the door. <laughs> yeah, you just sort of like desperately dodge out of the way, like ah, as you didn't expect them, and they're kind of heavy. There's a loud clang. Trey will and, cackle uh, a bit at, at at the antics. Just <laughs> well done. I mean, hey, it's open. Uh, also, this is the same metal that was used to skeleton the buildings in town. Just a lot more of it. Hmm, interesting. Uh, and I think also you just find it interesting that the cement here that's on the outside, it's not nearly as corroded. Like, the animals don't want to eat it, but also from the elements. Uh, you're not sure what's in it unless you want to roll me some material science about that, but... It's not metal, so he doesn't really care. <laughs> Fair enough. He's more interested in just, like, how big is this door and can I take it home with me? <laughs> Maybe when the ship comes by. I mean, it's a massive <coughs> door, but it's definitely wide enough that when the two open, you could, like, move a small, like, cart through it, maybe. Right. Let's keep moving for now, though. And in fact, on that note, it looks like there's, like, a really long uh, hallway just extending out. It gets very dark in there, but it's definitely meant to be a track of some kind. <laughs> and to the right and left, there is a uh, desk to the right that seems to at one point have been where like someone would check in to this facility and to the left are a bunch of empty racks uh they're a kind of wood that has rotted away more but a lot less than you'd assume uh like aether has definitely gotten in here the doors are not like pressure sealed but it's like natural rotting like creatures haven't come and eaten these hmm. uh, and uh as you sort of look through some of that rubble or at least look casually at it there are uh I guess barrels, like maybe gun barrels that have survived that are metal. Huh. It's not the same like anti-corrosiveness, but definitely they're very durable. The gun mechanism won't work because the wood holding it together is just gone. But, and you know, the shape of them is odd. Like it's not the way any other country makes guns. They're almost more spear-like. What the? Prof, you said these folks here, our folks were old, right? How old? Uh. Tate? Uh oh. No. Oh no, not again. I think I might have also dropped my headphones again. I, I mean, we can, we, can, yeah, I, yeah. we can hear you still. We can hear you. 
can't I can't hear you guys. Oh no, not Great. again. F. Huge F. I didn't nothing is broken. <sighs> F in chat. <coughs> F in the chat, folks. Many Fs. Alright, we'll stand by see if we can fix. In you will Fs, it seems. Mm-hmm. Yes. In the meantime, I'll uh I'll guess I'll just Actually, you know what? It's fine. We don't need to get a break. We don't need to get a break. Give me a second. Hmm? We're gonna stand by. And we'll fill the time by uh yeah, no, Draymond should turn over to Maxwell for a bit and just I saw you talking to Prof earlier. You got any read on how old the people were who were here? I'd have to ask Tate, because I don't know. <laughs> Damn it. It's, it's a long time as far Turns as I know. There's not much we can do without our lurus. We're, we're trying our best, okay? As, <laughs> we're filling the space. I mean, I don't know that I'm really uh, looking forward to finding out how old I actually am. Like... <laughs> Oh. Okay, you can be Grandpa Tin Man. Wait, hold up. Midlife crisis. <laughs> hold on. I don't think we can hear Tate anymore, by the way. We cannot hear Tate anymore. Nope. Uh-oh. He's probably no muted or something. That's also possible, yes. It's okay. We'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Quinn's gonna, hey. like... Huh? Huh? Hey. Hey. We can hear you! Hey. We're back to it! Hey, we can hear you! Woohoo! Right back at it! Okay, settle them back in immediately. So yeah, Drake's gonna resume immediately where he was. Just, uh, yeah, looking at the, at the spear guns. Just... Hey, Doc, you said our folks were... old. How old? Oh, well, they have... just as much history as any other of the nations and continents. They tried to keep up on every kind of modern technology you could imagine. Huh. And, uh, generally succeeded. But all the other folks... well... They're keeping their islands and shit afo afloat pretty well. We couldn't. Uh, he seems a little awkward, as uh, definitely the academics would remember, but especially uh, as Maxwell would recognize. He's like, ah, yes, well, that's part of why I'm here. Uh, we're trying to figure out why the continent fell. That means you got theories. Oh, well, there's... The commonly held one is some kind of accident. I just, well, look around and you can see, and you're all like walking down this uh, long hallway and there's various things that like branch out to the side, like barracks, uh, offices. Uh, most of the stuff in it has rotted away and isn't really useful, but you could probably loot a lot of materials from when you're done. It's like, well, they did not seem the kind to allow accidents to happen to the most valuable resource any island could have. I personally think there must have been some kind of event. Uh, very likely some sort of internal political thing if someone could get this deep in and cause damage to not just this heart, but the others as well. In a civil war or something? Just possibly. Uh, and he does seem sort of awkwardly. Like, that's the one I'm hoping to find. Huh. I can't wager if Drace is smart enough to piece that one together, but I feel like he's kind of thinking on the right page and just... Yeah. Huh. But I'd like to... Uh, sort of as you move along, you can see uh, various... At one point, there's like glass uh, windows that can look into what looks like maybe some kind of lab? Question mark? Like, there's definitely tables and glass equipment that a lot of it has actually been shattered and you start seeing evidence of battle like an attack there are bullet holes in the walls and uh there's burn scars uh there's even some like massive gouges into the stone on the floor in places and a few uh carts have kind of fallen over it's not uh it's not looking good uh, and Ostert seems worried. I... Mm, fuck. I hate that I'm about to do this, but I'm... Can I roll... I... It's probably gonna be... 
It's unfortunate because I have literally no points in it, but it's probably going to be knowledge deduce. Uh, Two? Yeah, I... Well, to do what? So, Dre... How do I phrase this? Dre knows what a slave raid looks like. He knows what it looks mm -hmm. like when a place is attacked mm -hmm. for the purpose of taking people. He wants to know if that's what happened here. I will allow you to do awareness insight, and so it's not about details, it's about the vibe. You got it. Awareness insight it is. That's a plus two, uh, plus dice flat. Okay, that comes. As opposed to a minus one if you tried to do to do. Yeah, listen, I mean, I was, I was, I was playing it for the, for the narrative, but here we go. The dice have decided. That's a, a six and two fives. Bam. Yeah, uh, it doesn't really look that way to you, actually. And it's because you start seeing all the bodies have rotted away. I mean, even the bones are not great, but you're starting to find bodies. And that's odd to you. Like, the clothing looks like they were shot or stabbed or various things. And you don't recognize any of it because it's so grayed out and rotted. But the scraps of it, usually a raid would, one, attack a populace center where there's, like, non-military people. And B would be very much about... Like, they would try and capture people. You can see, obviously, soldiers from the bits of metal that were their weapons, blades and guns, but also scientists. Or maybe people who, like, worked in uh, the... What's the right word? Like, in, uh, like, the logistics have been attacked. And there's an obvious line of people facing towards the door and people facing away from it as you get closer and closer. Hmm. And then eventually you get to this massive sort of vault door and Ozturk, who's been kind of perturbed by some of the destruction, sees it and it is sealed shut. Guess we hit our jackpot, huh? It's like, yes. It's... And he seems kind of speechless. He can't really find the right word. He just... You can open that. We'll have my answers. We'll have a lot more than that, Doc. How do we crack it? Huh. Well, I've been put a line of thought into that. And uh, you can see that it's this like big, round, very vault-like vault door. And there is uh, three different little like knobs uh, in sort of a triangle formation at arm height that have uh, a bunch of symbols that... Actually, that's like a question I would have for Dre. Is he familiar with... I guess his effectively his native written language. So this is where I'm gonna have to level a little bit of the narrative, um, and you're gonna have to hopefully you have to allow this. Tell me if I'm reaching too far here. Uh, it's fine. Dre looking is looking at the symbols on the on the on the mm -hmm. walls, the wheels here. A lot of them don't seem like they match anything, but he points at one of them, like runs his hand over it. It's mm -hmm. a symbol kind of like the upper half of a sun. And then there's a mm -hmm. smaller circle under it with like mm -hmm. blades coming out of it. He looks at it and is like, and then without saying any words, just reaches back and lifts his shirt off. There's a myriad of scars all over his back in different crisscrossing patterns, but there's a couple of them over his left shoulder that are cut quite specifically in that exact same pattern. He's holding his hand over it. Dre. That's... That's my name. Uh, yes, it's, uh... The language was metaphorical at times. Uh, people often use numbers as names if they were, say, naming the first son or the third son. Uh, those were very significant numbers. And, uh, yeah, which son was Dre? <laughs> Dre's, uh, Dre's the, uh, he's the third son in his, in his, uh, in his, in his, in his, in his group. Mm -hmm. But not exactly in the way you think about it. Families are a lot more communal in his community, so 
he was the third son born to like his group, but he was his mother's only mm -hmm. child. Yeah, and that's also very uh, true. This is like, yeah, three. Uh, these dials are letters, and he points to the one on the left. Uh, words, and these are much more complicated ones. They all like radiate outwards from the center, and numbers, and it's finding the right combination. I have some ideas. I just don't know how likely they will open it. And uh, a side note, wow, we just got raided. Hey. Oh, uh, hey, did we? It was. Oh my gosh, yeah. quit drinking. Hey, with the we party of 34. Hey, Yo. Hey, hey, hey. To see you guys. Uh, you're just catching the end of this, unfortunately, but. <laughs> Still, hey, friends. Hi, nice to see ya. We're definitely going to pass on the raid, though. Definitely, please. That's absolutely. No sure. question. You guys are great. Thank you so much. But, uh, back into character. He's like, I might know the combination. Uh, usually it's something to do with an uh, important date historically in the culture or uh, someone who was working at the facility that would have made it. I don't know for this door if that's going to work other than maybe the founding of the nation that's certainly a thought i mean good a guess as any i don't really remember much of what we had the only thing i could think if it's not that would be well god hmm? there's a story my, my ma used to tell me uh the goddess alesha She's sky and sea and storm is her domain. And my mom used to tell me about her and the way she would dance across the sky and paint it with stars every night. And she said one night, uh, her, her lover got jealous and said, tonight, don't paint the stars. And there were no lights in the sky that night. And so instead, her children lit up flames, a million little points of light to curtain the night. We call it the night of flaming stars. It's kind of also my birthday. Uh, yeah, Astrid doesn't know. Like, he, he stops for a moment, doesn't say anything. But then, yeah, that's... We'll try both. And uh, he first does a certain combination. And uh, as he like pushes each of the dials in after it reaches the right thing, uh, the last one doesn't fit. And he goes, hmm, well, it's not the date of the founding of the nation. And then he throws the other one around. And uh, it's a slightly different amount. And as he pushes it, there's a click. Trey's eyes kind of light up a little bit. Uh, it seems the myth was correct. Huh. Thanks, Ma. And uh, these massive doors are uh, supposed to swing outward, and so he has to step back and actually needs several people to help uh, grab the side and just... You are almost surprised at the just smoothness of the action. I think especially you, Oliver, who like this. There should be so much more rust in this thing. But it seems like maybe it's made of the same anti-corrosive metal as it slowly glides open and you see the heart of the continent or at least one of the several hearts Whoa. it's this massive metal sphere that has what looks like almost purposeful markings around it uh, vents and lines that you would know normally would be the lower ones would be sucking in all of this aether and the upper ones would be effectively pumping out uh earth and water you can see there's a complex mechanism on the top that would catch all of that and let them distribute it and it's how more uh it's how larger continents especially the people there sort of plan how their island changes uh but you can see now that the earth that would be coming out into those things has broken many of those mechanics and so instead of a large vaulted area it's like a sharp, almost too close ceiling that meets in the center of this uh, heart. And it's shredded. 
at the bottom. There's an obvious place where it should be fit together correctly, and the heart itself has effectively tried to heal it over, but it looks like old wounds, like scar tissue, as the heart itself collects more and more material to make into these metal structures that are supposed to manage themselves uh, in a natural island. But it's obviously not working exactly right. It's probably getting much less uh, lift. I think uh, Reese and Oliver, you would be able to tell, like, yeah, this is why the island is so destabilized, why it's lifting up far beyond where it should and going far deeper than it ought to. Uh, and there's bodies around, or at least parts of them. Do uh, we... Can we tell, like... If those pipes that are running um, and, like, the structures that it, it's tried to build to repair itself, can we tell, like, if we can help repair it at all? Uh, I mean, without having to roll, you know it's possible. It would just be, like, a months-long project. And even if you repaired it, this thing has momentum now, this island. You would be able to uh, get it to stop doing greater and greater, I guess, uh, oscillations, you could say. You'd be able to keep it like this is now as far as it's going to go up and down, but then you would need some great force to stop it from doing those oscillations. You'd effectively need to do an opposite force in some way to get it to now stay at the surface and stay there. Could we assume, looking at this as well, that you know, the damage from this heart would have effectively, like, the other hearts of this island would have the same level of damage, if not worse. Uh, you know, I'd love to see you roll, let's say... I think you could do history on this, actually, or mechanical knowledge. And, uh... Oliver, if you want to do material sciences, I think you could help with that. Absolutely. Alright, so... Uh, you would add a 2 to your roll from Reese's, and, okay. uh, Reese, you would add, uh... Should be a three. Yeah, you would add a three to your roll from his science. So that's a fifteen for me. After his three? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a uh, uh, that's a nineteen for me. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, I think that the way that works is Reese, you're looking at it and you're like, is that enough to do it alone? Would he need a little more oomph to like really destabilize this uh, continent? And you'd maybe, like, muse about that out loud when Oliver can then come in and be like, you'd need to hit at least one other of the hearts about as hard. Hmm. Yeah, so... so uh, we may not be able to stop the oscillations, the rising and the falling, but could we prolong it? So if we were to repair these, could we make it so that the island is available longer than it usually is? I mean, yeah, if you could repair it, it would stabilize it. And, I mean, in theory, eventually just the natural, uh, I guess, uh, like air resistance of both the aether and the atmosphere would slow it down. But that's like a generations from now kind of thing. This is a big fucking rock. Sure, but I'm just talking like, you know, we have limited time to access the island now, if we were to repair the hearts, could we extend that limited time that we can access it? But wouldn't repairing the heart yeah, take months? If, if you repair the scarring on the heart, it should be able to finish the structures that, like, move earth and water. It would become a more natural process. Mm. You would need to fix those scars and then basically collapse this room, because this room was designed to help the heart, but without maintenance, it's kind of hurting its ability to really correctly distribute the resources it absorbs. Hmm. You can even see through the bottom of this room, the planned like vents. If you look down them, they're just these super long mass, like person-sized vents that you could see down that in oh. theory go to the bottom of the continent. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I almost completely forgot this. There are bodies in this room. Yeah. Bits of them. Uh, there's no one complete skeleton in this room that you can see uh, until... You look in sort of like the corner where the uh, where some of the equipment is. There is a full body. Uh, it looks like someone who maybe was in some kind of I don't know robe. It's definitely not military. And I'm glad that you asked because there's 
like a metal plate next to him. Uh, you'd recognize it as similar to like Reese's Aether Mat, uh, Reese's Matter Forming Magic, but this guy pulled like a section of the wall out and wrote something on it, like etched it into the metal. I, I, oh dear, uh, I guess, yeah. Uh, that looks important. It does look yeah. Important. Uh, He's missing a leg too, like, so like this guy just looking at him like, oh yeah, he did this at the end. He got cut down. Some hold on, hold on. This vault was locked. This was an inside job. I gotta look at the plate. What's what's it say? Or someone locked it when they left. Yeah, someone locked it on the way out. Or I gotta, I gotta know what's happening here. Unfortunately, uh, I don't yeah. think I can read this plate or anything. Yeah, you uh, hold it, and you're probably like looking at it and just. You wish you could read it, and Ostrich just, may I? P please. He just hands it out to him. Uh, he's looking at it, and you see him, like, his brow furrows, and he's just... Two steps forward and one step back. Uh, this is the only heart vault, I guess you could say, that survived. Uh, I'd already located the other two, but they'd collapsed completely, uh, seemingly from natural causes of just the continent shifting. Uh, we could maybe find the other one. I'm uh, find a way into them eventually, but this one, this one was preserved. And now I think I know why. And he with the tablet. This is this is a final testament, you could say. And the scientist apparently there was an attack of some kind. He doesn't go into detail, simply they... And he sealed himself in to give himself more time as the island fell. More time to try and fix it, and then more time to write this, I guess? I imagine it's not a quick process, as he looks to Reese. Not a quick process to make something like this that would survive for this long. Yeah, that's out of my... Hmm. Wait, wait, an attack? Does it say by who? No, but it says that they wanted our great discovery and they wanted it hidden. And there's a location. I'll have to compare it to some maps and the shifts that I've been recording, but it's, it's near the mines, the metal mines. They were doing some research of some kind, some sort of metallurgy, it seems like. Our, there's a reference here to harnessing Aether in an untold way. And it was so bad they killed us for it. All of us. We don't know who yet, he says, and he's like, stands up, he's like, we don't it could have been an internal conflict, maybe, to control that resource. We don't know, and he's looking around. And uh, I would love for uh, Reese and Maxwell to roll me some history stuff. Uh, four? Does that sound uh, right? Sure. Or I guess I have, I have like, I... Do I have his? No, I don't. Like, history isn't its own skill. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, so, a 13. I rolled three fives, which is 15, and I have a three, so 18. Yeah, I mean, even as Ostrich is saying that, you can both see he doesn't believe it he knows this wasn't an internal attack because several of the bodies out there, even their rotted clothing uh, and some of the pieces <sighs> in here, it's not it's not the clothing from this hey, continent. It's not hey, um, an obvious where it's from, but Can I roll to see if Dre notices that Ozturk is lying? 
Yeah. Uh, what should I roll? I guess, can I, can I roll Subtlety Deceive as someone who also lied to people a fair bit? Uh, let's see. Uh, sure, I think you could do that. You could also do Insight that would be plus two, or I think Notice. I'll like take notice, yeah. Really I'll, I'll take I'll take awareness notice. That that gives me a plus five on the die. Let's see the roll. That is not the best roll on the die. Looks like it's a nine on the die with a five. Makes that a I can't do math very well. 14, so fourteen. 14. I will spend three. Act well, this is a contested roll. Oh, that's fair. Uh, and you don't you don't need to spend points. Ostrich cool. is not good at this. Okay, so uh, then um I'm just gonna go ahead and and take this for a brief moment. Uh, while he's slowly mumbling his way through his, you know, it's possibly an internal conflict. Uh, Dre, who has been sitting Neil by this person the whole time, just comes up and slugs him. Oh, yeah, he goes down. You don't have to roll for that. He just, he's not unconscious, but he is on his ass and he's just... And while on the ground, Dre just, with tears in his eyes, is like, lie to me again and I'll shoot you. All right, fine. There's... Obviously evidence that some outside forces were here. They could have been paid for by people internally, but it's hard to keep secrets, especially some amazing technological ones when you hire mercenaries. I... I need to get back to the ship. I gotta think for a bit. Don't follow me. And he yeah, just, he's not getting up. He just, he walks off. And, uh, unless there's another scene you guys want, I think that's actually a really interesting place to sort of end the session. I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for being Great. here. Uh, sorry for all some of the technical difficulties. Uh, I would love for uh, my players to uh, go in... Let's do the same order that we did before, uh, starting with Maxwell. Uh, who you are, who you played, and anything you want to pitch? Or I guess not pitch, uh, highlight. Yeah, uh, yeah that's good. Uh, I'm Perfect Bill. I played uh, Maxwell Tuttle. Uh, definitely a ship historian, don't worry about it. Uh, doesn't not, not, Nothing else. Um, <laughs> what I do, uh, next thing I'll be on will be this in two weeks, and then right after that on... Uh, April 11th, I will be running the uh, Iron GM again. Um, it's our last of our tur of our starting round of, of our tournament. Um, and we have, uh, actually, Tate is going to be one of our guests, along with uh, Ash and Rabbit. It's going to be a fun little show where uh, two GMs make a, get some random prompts and have to make a one-shot in an hour. And then uh, we have a couple judges and chat get to decide who wins. It goes on in the tournament to the next round. So, um it's a really fun show that I love to put on, and uh, I hope. And if you want to come and join us, uh, it's good. So that'll be over on. That's over on TPK Roleplay on April 11th, and I think uh, I gotta remember. It's 5 p.m. Pacific. I think that's right. Um, but <laughs> nothing else. I'll, I'll pass it on uh, up to uh, Lucian. Hey, I'm Lucian. Uh, I played our marble sling material scientist, Dr. Oliver Evans. And, you know, I'll be here again in two weeks on this and uh, nowhere else. Except so I'll see you guys next time. Except his personal That's channel where he streams yeah, sometimes, sometimes every now and then. Yeah, come on. No, I stop mean, all that. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where can we find you on the socials, my man? Uh, only on Twitch sometimes Twitch. Okay. here. What's your, what's your, not here, but like on my channel. That's true. Well, well yeah, Discord sometimes. <laughs> Okay. All right, I guess that leaves it up to me. Yeah, it sure hey, does. Hey, everybody. It's me, Seracolot. You know, um, today I played Arden Clark, the ether biologist, who got to use ether biologist skills. I'm so excited. <laughs> ah, it was Yee. good. It was really good. Um, I love talking nerdy biology things, both Even in and out of character. You things on this stream about, like, yeah. fish and shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is, like, this is the best fucking um, neon lights you... roleplay you get some roleplay some education <laughs> you get you, you get some head truths you mean yes. okay yeah if you want to see more of that 
Um, you can follow me on social medias. I'm on all the social medias at Sir Heck a lot. Um, so Twitter, Twitch, um, the uh, bulk of uh, my biology stuff is probably going to be on TikTok, honestly. So um, I'm starting that up. So if you're on TikTok, follow me on there. Um, most recently, it was a bird yelling at me in public. So, <laughs> you know, so um, it's how it goes. <laughs> in terms of the TTRPG space, um, you can find me here um, every other Sunday for the show that you just saw. You can see me here on Friday for my uh, GM debut uh, for Neon Lights, uh, playing yeah, yeah. a stupid food teach RPG that I'm not going to name because fuck corporate, but it's going to be great. <laughs> um, it's going to be so chaotic, and I'm so excited for it. Mm-hmm. Um, we have plans. We have plans. Um, then this Thursday, uh, the 31st, you can find me on uh, the uh, Twitch channel J is a Nerd. Um, I'm going to be doing a one-on-one shot, so uh, I will be the only player um, in this one shot that I'm going to be running through. And it's uh, we decided yesterday it's going to be very like witchery kind of theme, so it's going to be mm. real cool. Mm. I'm very excited. I'm playing a bard because what's new? Um, <laughs> and then uh, you can find me uh, on TPK Roleplay every other Tuesday and Thursday, um, and then on Wednesdays throughout. All of April, I'm going to be over on Lost Caravan RPG playing another Locust mini series. So uh, be ready, and uh, that's about it. So uh, let's keep on keeping on. I fail. I believe that's uh, yeah, fail. Hey everybody, I'm Fail Prime. Uh, I played Reese, uh, slowly discovering more and more and more about myself, uh, and you know what happened uh, before I woke up and how I ended up the way that I am. Uh, you can find me here, pretty much. Um, this is about the only thing that I am currently active in. Uh, if you want to check out my socials, uh, Twitter is at Fail Prime. Uh, you'll get a lot of hot takes and uh, a lot of really bad opinions. Um, and that's that's about it. We'll uh, we'll throw it on up. Oh, okay. I guess that's me. Uh, hi, it's me, Michelle. I played Quinn, our uh, bodyguard, come chef, mostly chef, come come medic. Uh, you can't find me on social media, so don't bother. Um, you can occasionally catch me here, though, in our community server, uh, so check that out. Um, but as for stuff that I'll be in, I am going to be GMing our uh, a Bladesville campaign on Tuesday. It's going to be... Well, let's just say that I'm hoping players don't die, but I've. Pro- it's probably going to happen. Let's leave it at that. Y'all are fucked. Y'all gonna die. Just saying that out Sorry. loud. Apologies <laughs> like, in who advance. Are about to die, them. salute you. <laughs> <laughs> y'all finna get bodied. I'm just gonna let y'all know that clearly. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but otherwise you can catch me besides here on, on Violet C, but you can also catch me on uh, every other Wednesday. Uh, so next Wednesday, not this Wednesday, next Wednesday uh, for our After the End campaign with uh, Foxy up over here uh, as our GM playing uh arcane our sad little dragon child <laughs> sad dragon child all right I'm captain Dre. let's see if i can get it all right this time so friends uh if you don't know who i am by now i'm young foxy aka big foxy also known as your favorite fox i can be found on the twitter sphere at big underscore i or i could until i got perma banned uh most importantly today i played the uh the rambunctious the low the loquacious and the audacious captain Dre. Uh, who's feeling a lot of things, obviously, if you couldn't tell. Uh, Austin Session Tate was freaking amazing. If you're wondering what you can see me in next, uh, I will be on standby doing a lot of things. Uh, my magnum opus campaign right now, as mentioned previously, is every bi-weekly uh, Wednesday here on Neon Roleplay. It's after the end, a tale of loss, moving on, and death across the multiverse. Uh, every episode, my players blow me away. Please come check out that campaign if you haven't. If not for me, then for the incredible cast that I brought together. Uh, other than that, I'm on Weed the Tail. Uh, every Thursday for Into the Stormlands, the Pathfinder 2e campaign, which is super, super fun. I'm on T- uh, TPK Roleplay, bi-weekly Fridays for Cold Hands, Warm Hearts, which is just, I fucking love that campaign. It's incredible. I am here on Neon Lights Roleplay, bi-weekly Saturdays for Against the Light, another super heavy uh, Kingdoms and Warfare campaign that is very political, very fantasy, and incredibly horny. Uh, that's just the reality. Uh, outside of that, I've got about three or four things that are coming up in the works for me in the very near future. 
uh, that I'm super excited for. I absolutely can't wait. But this is such a fun thing to go for. Obviously, we'll catch me back here in two weeks. I'm going to pass it back over to our Loris now who can bring us back home. But just shout out to the cast for an awesome session. And, uh, yeah, let's bring it home. Yeah. Uh, I'm Tate Washburn. I've been the Lorist. I'm the one who made the Tri system, the system we're using for this, uh, the setting, and all that. It was, fun fact, literally a setting I cooked up because... I wanted a setting for the system that I didn't like care that much about, and then I care about it too much now, uh, just so much. It's been a wild ride so far. I'm glad y'all liked it. You can uh, find me here, obviously, when I'm running the Violet Sea. Uh, I am a player in our Against the Light campaign, which will be happening next Saturday. Uh, I will also be involved in the Naruto campaign, the a Blades Will campaign, on uh, Tuesday. Uh, I have a very quick and punchy boy who is probably going to die, and that's going to be interesting. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at kinda underscore writing. Uh, I'm trying out a TikTok, although I just don't really remember exactly the tag I have for that, so I'll update our socials on that later. Uh, but what you should really do is follow this channel's Twitter at uh, Neon Lights Our Play, because that's where we announce all our cool stuff, and Sir Heck uses great gifts for all of our announcements, and I think we put our better jokes on there because, uh, you know, it's fun. And then you can also join our Discord uh, where, you know, we get players for some of our campaigns like A Blade's Will and we talk about tabletop and memes and stuff like that. It's a good time. You should definitely join it. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, you know, the other stuff that's been mentioned. I completely forgot that the 11th is when I'm doing uh, the Iron GM. <laughs> Better so, get yeah. prepped, fucko! <laughs> yeah, I was planning on, on making you aware of that at the end of this. Just to be, like, double sure that you remember this. Better get prep, buddy boy. But hey, I'm the uh, I'm currently unemployed, Tate. So I'll definitely have time to prep. So, uh, yeah, that's. I think that's it. Thank you guys. Thanks Twitch for having us and letting us do our uh, cool fucking magic piracy rebellion game. It's great. Uh, it's, it's, getting I... wild. it's getting real wild, guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and head out of here. We're gonna throw our raid over to dear friend of the show, Ali Peach Senpai, who we love and care for more than anybody else in the universe. You can check the stats on that if you have to. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Remember that anything else is unimportant. The only thing to matter is to take care of yourselves and each other. Okay. Bye bye, everybody. We love you. Take care, boys. Bye. Bye.